Sparky's got that pitchfork sharp and just about set for kickoff. Arizona State won the toss and defer. That could be dangerous. Last three seasons, Oregon, 14 touchdown drives against the Sun Devils, all of them in less than two minutes. And the Ducks of Chip Kelly, who will get the ball first, score quickly. Alex Garut is going to kick off deep for Oregon, DeAnthony Thomas and Keenan Lowe. You know how dangerous Thomas can be. Closing teams haven't given Oregon much of a chance to return kicks this year. But this will be Lowe taking it inside his 10. Keenan Lowe finally knocked down at about the 36-yard line, and the Ducks will have it first. Here are the impact players for Oregon tonight. Kenyon Barner and DeAnthony Thomas, a couple of explosive players on offense, can score from anywhere. Kiko Alonso was the MVP of the Rose Bowl defensively. He leads a better than advertised Oregon defense. Yeah, Kiko Alonso on defense tonight, a guy to watch for. He'll be making a lot of tackles. Expect to have his name called often against an Arizona State offense that wants to establish the run. The freshman from Honolulu, Marcus Mariota, is the quarterback. Mariota is going to throw it to DeAnthony Thomas. There is his first touch of the night, and it goes for a very short game. Thomas scores every eight times he touches it on average in his career. Mariota getting a completion early. And Mariota is going to be the one to watch. First true road start. Obviously the first year starting in this system. Got some playmakers and plays fast on the road as he affected it all tonight. Football's on the ground. That's been a problem for Oregon. It's a turnover. And going the other way is Davon Coleman. And two plays in. The one thing that Todd Graham wanted come up with turnovers and the Sun Devils have one. And how they do it, Oregon's offense is always so good. And they find guys, oh. This is Will Sutton, who's down hurt. He is Arizona State's best defensive lineman. He's the one who got the ball free and Todd Graham coming out to check on, on his star, who is second in the country in sacks, top five in tackles for loss. And he is the guy who gives Arizona State a big advantage on defense against Oregon. And they don't block him on the inside. They absolutely let him come free. That's their way of reading him. They don't want to block him and waste two guys because he's such a dominant player. Let him go right up the middle. And you see he gets in there and kind of tackles both of them. But that's what they'll do. I mean, they're going to turn your best player loose a lot of times on defense and just run that option game off of him. Well, here's the problem. If you're Arizona State now, your defensive line has been so dominant all season long so far, and they've done an unbelievable job getting penetration into the opponent's backfield. That's what they thought was going to be a big advantage for them in tonight's game, using that speed and athleticism up front. Will Sutton, without question, one of the outstanding D linemen in the entire country and a guy they cannot afford to lose tonight. And as we take another look at the injuries, Sutton is being helped off the field. This crowd goes from an extreme high of forcing a turnover on the second play from scrimmage as Sutton slaps the ball away from Mariota. And goes knee to knee, it looks like. And then to the hushed silence of knowing their best defensive player is unable to get off the field totally under his own power. Well, remember too, guys, depth is a key issue for Arizona State's defense. They were only going to rotate three different defensive ends in this game and not a lot of guys inside. Their numbers just went down one, and that's bad against an Oregon offense that likes to play up-tempo. But they do take advantage of the turnover from the 28-yard line. Great field position to start, and Taylor Kelly, the quarterback, going to fire his first pass, has a man open! And he's into the end zone, and it is a touchdown. Kevin Ozier. What a start for the Sun Devils. In three plays, they forced a turnover and scored a touchdown, and Arizona State's up 6-0. Great play call by offensive coordinator Mike Norvell. Sudden change situation. You take a quick strike on your first play. Little misdirection. Wide open Ozier on the boundary. So Zier's fourth touchdown catch of the year, the former walk-on. And Arizona State has some early momentum. Now how that will be affected with Sutton potentially being out of the lineup remains to be seen. Garut puts it through, and you want to talk about 
quick strike, high octane. How about a one play, 28 yard, seven second <laughs> wow. drive, if you want to call it that. You want it to start fast, get the crowd involved. Great job, a little play action. Kelly's got the tight end right there, Coyle on the flat as well, but goes deep. Hey guys, we'll get the crowd involved a little bit. That's a pretty good start. You know, it's so important that they're able to start fast, and it really goes back and it starts with the very first play of scrimmage. Will Sutton getting in the backfield, creating a fumble that they can recover. But guys, they want to seize the momentum tonight. They want this home field advantage to demonstrate itself. They figure they have to score 35 points if they're going to beat Oregon tonight. That You could not have scripted a better start. A couple of numbers. Arizona State's been great in the first quarter, outscoring its opponents now 69-10. to 10. Problematically for the Ducks, that was their 15th turnover this season. They're in the bottom 25 in the country in terms of number of times they've given up the football. And very quickly, less than a minute into the game, and guys, they're down by seven. Know, we asked the question, how poised would this team be playing their first true road game with a redshirt freshman quarterback that hasn't yet played in an environment like this? Garut, again to load, they're keeping it away from DeAnthony Thomas. Low. Stopped just short of the 30-yard line, and the Ducks will have it for the second time tonight. One thing we'll keep our eye on, guys, is the tempo of offense for Oregon. They're going to try to wear out a very talented, but now very, very thin defense from Arizona State. 27 yards on the return. As you look out at the defensive line, no Will Sutton right now. We'll get an update on his status as soon as we can. So the Ducks quickly down seven. Mariota's going to try to get it back. Josh Huff is out there by himself, and it is knocked away. Beautifully defended on the play by Keelan Johnson. And, and one thing you don't see a lot in this Duck offense, they don't take a lot of shots downfield. They feel really confident in their run game, and you see Josh Huff. He had an opportunity, but more importantly, Mariota underthrew that ball. He was wide open. He's the one playmaker, Huff, on the outside that's got some serious burners. He leads him a little bit more. That's a touchdown. Barner into the open field. Kenyon Barner is gone. Seventy-one yards for Barner. That's not even his longest run of the year. He had an eighty-yarder. I told you in the open, don't blink. <laughs> we haven't played ninety seconds yet. We've got two touchdowns. The inside zone run play is Oregon's bread and butter in their running game. You're going to see a huge gap right up the middle. On the handoff, center and guard work in tandem. You wonder, will Sutton not on the field? Yeah. Is that problematic? Well, you just found out your answer. So the Ducks are going to try that two-point play that they often do, and it is perfect. Rob Beard, who is normally the kicker, took the pass from the punter, Jackson Rice, and the Ducks look to see if they have an advantage. They can get the two, they do, and just like that, Oregon is back on top. 8-7 after Barner's explosive run. Kenyon Barner, by the way, now fourth on Oregon's all-time scoring list. He puts the Ducks back on top. Kenyon Barner went 71. Just like that, and after Oregon had fallen behind quickly, the Ducks score, get the two-point conversion, go on top 8-7, and at least temporarily silencing the crowd at Sun Devil Stadium. Almost full. We were expecting close to the capacity of 71,000-plus. Now Alejandro Maldonado will kick it away for Oregon. Coming out of the end zone is Rashad Ross. And Ross, who we saw last week, take one back from 100 yards against Colorado, stopped across the 20. Uh, Samantha, what do you have on Will Sutton? Yeah, a lot's happened since then, Reese. I just talked to head athletic trainer Bill Martin. He told me it is a right knee injury. They're now icing his knee, which usually is a bad sign. But I asked Bill if it's possible that Will could come back in the first half. He said, yes, it is. They will reevaluate. So still some hope for Will Sutton fans, guys. Second play from scrimmage. Sutton knocked the ball away from Marcus Mariota set up the Sun Devils touchdown and now 
Taylor Kelly with the second possession of the night. We'll have it from his own 22. Here goes Cameron Marshall. Cameron Marshall knifing through the Ducks secondary and getting up close to the 40. And this is one of the things Arizona State has to do. They have to establish a downhill running attack. And Marshall, look at those quads and legs. He's the guy that's going to have to show that presence. East and West doesn't work for Oregon. Marshall taking a break. You'll see running back by committee for Arizona State. Marion Grice is in number one. He was dangerous last week against Colorado catching the football. And he's got another one. And it's another first down for Arizona State as they get down to the 40. Arizona State has three different running backs that can be weapons catching the football. So that's going to put a lot of stress on Oregon tonight defensively to play with tremendous eye discipline, see where guys are lining up, not allow guys to get wide open. Two plays, both over 15 yards on this drive. Arizona State's run three plays, all of them longer than 15 yards. Kelly thinks about going deep, buying a little time, extending the play. And he's shoved out of bounds by Buseco Lacumbo. Well, David, to come back to your point earlier, it's important Arizona State runs the football in this game yeah. for two reasons. One, they got to keep their defense on the sideline. They got to allow them to get rest. But two, they have to avoid obvious passing situations on third down because this Oregon defense can rush the pass. Second down and eight. The give is to DJ Foster. Foster inside the 30. He's got another first down. Arizona State has plenty of impact players, and we've seen all of them make their presence felt in the early going on offense. Marshall, Foster, Grice, all with solid plays, and Will Sutton's forced a turnover, and as Samantha reported a few moments ago, waiting to see if he'll be able to return to the game. Meanwhile, Arizona State likes to go at a quick tempo, maybe not quite as fast as Oregon, but they go. It's Grice. And Grice against an Oregon defense that has been very stingy when the game was in doubt. At the moment, Arizona State's controlling play up front. Doing a very good job being physical. This Arizona State offensive line only averages 292 pounds, but they're athletic. They can pull. They can get outside and get some push, and you're seeing that. Hey, you think that yards per play is going to keep up all night? <laughs> Both of them averaging more than 14 defense yards option. per play. And both of these teams proud of their defense. Kelly's going to pull it, dump it out to Grice, and he had it right in his hands. Would have had a first down and a lot more, and Marion couldn't hold on to it. There is so much eye candy in this <laughs> Arizona State offense, isn't there, with play fakes, guys in motion, guys crossing in front of their faces. That's why I say, Davey, Oregon's defense has to have good eye control. Well, and two teams that are built on similar principles. Mike Norvell, he'll, he'll go tick for tack. I mean, he's a guy that is used to this up-tempo, used to spread him out in this direction. Both these teams run the same style of offense, so they should be accustomed to it. Third down and three. Pressure from the back, and Kelly is sacked. That is Deion Jordan. And this guy, Mr. Jordan, is an athlete. You look at him at the bottom of the screen. Passing situations, he will be a terror. You see him get off the ball, use his arms, bend around the corner. Arizona State does not want to be in passing situations because of that guy right see, there. And that was not an obvious passing situation. No. That was third and short. The way they're running the football, I'm not so sure you just stick with it. Easy to say that now, obviously. Well, they're right. going to try the field goal from 43 yards out. I'm not so sure had they not had such a negative play, they might not have gone for it on fourth down. And now Garut will put it up from 43, and it is no good. So Oregon is the first stop of the night, and the Ducks will have the ball back after a promising drive goes awry late. Weekend menu brought to you by Applebee's. We'll start it at noon on Saturday with old Johnny Football. Johnny Manziel <laughs> and Texas A&M against LSU. Got some good ones going. Well, Johnny Football putting up 576 yards against Louisiana Tech, an SEC record. A little hey, bit different looking This is different defense. Louisiana. Hey, hey, it's different goes, Louisiana. Goes Louisiana Tech. This is Louisiana State. Johnny Football. There's Barner looking for more running room. Gets up close to the 35. Ain't Johnny Football better adhere to this philosophy? Touchdown, first down, get down. down. <laughs> or or the, the Tigers might have a little something for him. Here is Jake Sheffield, who is replacing Will Sutton at the moment. Sutton's being attended to on the sideline. Sheffield, an interesting story. 26 years old, served three tours in Iraq, and playing in this big game tonight. Mariota completes it to Daryl Hawkins. And the former quarterback gets enough for the first down for the Ducks. 
And this is something that you want to see from Mariota tonight. Blitz off the edge, Arizona State. They're an aggressive defense. Really quick decision, spilled out to the flats. So far, you know, so far, so good. Mariota firing miscommunication. He was looking for the freshman Braylon Addison, who has nobody is De'Anthony Thomas, but at least some of the same attributes. They can use him in similar ways. Dave, wasn't Dave, looking that time. David, your point, Arizona State is going to blitz a lot tonight. They're not going to let Oregon's tempo dictate to them. They're going to bring guys from all over the joint, try and dictate towards Marcus Mariota. Mariota keeps it. And Mariota takes a big hit as he gets out across the 42, maybe close to the 43. It's going to bring up third down and about four or five. Marcus Mariota has to be very careful with ball security in this game. He's thrown an interception in at least of his last four games, but this is what worries me the most. He's taking a lot of big hits. He's got to get down and protect the football. The Anthony Thomas, his second touch, he has the first down. Also, high Nirabor stops him, but the Ducks will move the chains. Oregon's going to run a lot. They trust that their tempo is going to, at some point tonight, create a misalignment or fatigue, and that's where they get their explosive play. Now here come the Ducks with more of that tempo. Almost a mishandle on the give to Thomas, and Alden Darby there to stop him. And you see the Anthony Thomas starts off in the slot as a wide receiver. Then he motions back, and he becomes a running back. It's so hard defensively to keep up with all the different motions and, and who's playing what position. On average in his career, DeAnthony needs it five more times before he'll find the end zone. <laughs> so get ready. You guarantee that, Mr. Better, Davis? I'm just saying you better get ready, Coach. <laughs> you better get ready. Kenyon Barner's found the end zone tonight. He's looking for a first down. He's got it in a lot more inside the 35 of Arizona State. Arizona State will live and die by the blitz tonight. We said they're going to bring a lot of pressure. This time, bring it from the left side. Oregon decides to just run right into it with an outside stretch zone play. Kenyon Barner able to get the crease. That's what happens when you blitz. The band's going to play. The question is, which one is it? Barner just five yards short of a 100-yard gain. This time, stop for a very short game, second and long. It's not a very complicated running scheme from Oregon. They really have three runs, inside zone, outside zone, and the run power. The tempo is what makes it difficult for well, The problem is tackling these little water bugs too, man. I mean, they're, they're, they're both so shifty, and then you get a little bit fatigued, and they're so fast they can make a miss in a hurry. Both are in the game now. Mariota has it, could pitch it. Marcus has good speed, and he pitches late, and the ball's on the ground again and goes out of bounds. And Mariota, who's already lost one fumble tonight, could have lost another one. We're just talking about ball security with the redshirt freshman playing his first game, true road game, here in a hostile environment. Tremendous athlete, but you have to understand when the play is dead, David. And if Barner would have kept coming, he could have caught that pitch. Not, I'm not saying it was a smart pitch, but Barner kind of stopped on the play. But when you get in these big games and you start scoring a lot of points, I think a lot of times you naturally try to outduel the other guy sometimes. And another defensive lineman for Arizona State, slow to get up, and it's Junior Agnelli. Whoa, whoa. All right, so their two best D linemen right. are now down. There's Will Sutton, wow. who was hurt on the second play of the game. Mm. And now Agnelli is down. Agnelli is a junior from the Denver area. Sutton has been dominant. And now, remember, Todd Graham has also suspended Mike Pinnell, an interior defensive line player, because his attitude wasn't what he wanted. So perilously thin on the defensive line against a powerful Oregon offensive team, and Arizona State's going to call a timeout for this third and seven play. The one thing Todd Graham has said the last two weeks is that his team is thin. That depth is being tested in the first half of the first quarter. Oregon up on Arizona State, 8-7. Tomorrow, and in part by Hyundai. Go online and show your loyalty to your school at HyundaiShowYourLoyalty.com. You know it's a big game when there are pranks involved. Oregon fans went up and painted that A, which is normally gold, green. And the Arizona State students painted it black for the blackout. Black might be the mood for the Arizona State defensive staff with two defensive linemen down in the early going. 
Byron Marshall has checked into the game for Oregon. He's Cameron Marshall's younger brother, the running back from Arizona State, and he'll be stopped short of the first down. It'll be fourth down. Fourth down for Mariota, and Oregon tried to get it snapped, and Arizona State is going to stop the proceedings before the fourth and three play. Timeout. Arizona State. That's their second charge timeout. This is a 30-second charge timeout. So Arizona State trying to get everything set. Uh, Sam, you have an update on Will Sutton from Arizona State. Yeah, Reese, you were right about the mood on this sideline. It's not good because I just heard the official word from head athletic trainer that Will Sutton will not return in this game. He is on crutches right now dealing with that right knee injury. We'll keep you posted on Junior on Yaley's injury. Right now they're working on his right shoulder. All right, Sam, and as you saw in the graphic, those two guys on Yaley, that's him there, number five, and Sutton are responsible for 12 and a half of the 26 sacks that Arizona State has this year. That's second in the country, first in the Pac-10. That was the one area where Arizona State thought that they had an advantage on Oregon, and now some backups will be called on. So if you're Oregon right now, just run inside. You've had success with the inside zone so far. Run where Arizona State is at its weakest, in the middle. Fourth down and three. They want to throw instead. Mariota's got great speed, plenty to get the first down, plenty to get down close to the 10 yard line. And Oregon uses the athleticism of the freshman quarterback. You want to know how important that fourth down was? Todd Graham and company took a timeout. So they had an opportunity to get the right personnel on the field and not get up tempoed by Oregon. Big scramble, because they're just they're trying to fight right now to hold on, losing a couple key guys. Okay, now look at this. Brian Bennett is in at quarterback, but Mariota is still in the backfield. Bennett fakes it to Mariota, and Brian takes a big hit as he gets down close to the five. Oregon is one of the best red zone offenses in the entire country because they can run the football. When you add a guy like Marcus Mariota, they're that much more difficult to defend. Guys, they're scoring touchdowns on 77% of their red zone possessions. And we saw Bennett last year, very gifted runner, lost the quarterback derby to Mariota and they gave it to Colt Lyell out of the backfield and he was swamped Anthony Jones making the stop Chip Kelly told me on the field before the game that Brian Bennett and Colt Lyell line up together in the backfield because their messes are better in the running game because they practice together with the same reps throughout the week and Bennett returns to the sideline and Mariota will be taking the snaps on third and five can get a first down have to get it to the two they like to use a lot of misdirection down here and roll Mariota outside to throw. Barner looked like he might have moved early. Throw toward the end zone, and he's got Braylon Addison for the score. The freshman Addison with his second touchdown catch of the year. This offense is hard enough to stop to begin with. If they start playing pitch and catch like this, <laughs> this offense is impossible to stop. What a throw. What a catch. And Oregon went for the two-point conversion last time by throwing it to the kicker. Rob Beard, that's him at the bottom, number 93. Rob's had a couple of two-point conversion catches this year, and now he'll apparently score in a more traditional fashion going for the kick. He's never missed an extra point. Now whistles will stop things. And they didn't get the snap off in time. Delay a game. Offense, number 49. Five-yard penalty. Retry. Every now and then that chicanery will back you up a little bit. Shouldn't be a problem for Beard. 40 of 40 on the season. Perfect in 108 attempts in his career. And you can make it 109. Oregon stretches its lead to 15-7 as we say hello to Scott Van Pelt. Sports Center right now, brought to you by Coors Light. Cabrera, Triple Crown, Monster Home Run, Delman Young, the ALCS MVP, the Detroit Tigers sweep the New York Yankees. Let the speculation about the future in the Bronx for A-Rod begin. 
All right, Scott, so the Tigers on their way to the World Series. Here's Braylon Addison, who just scored the touchdown. You guys have talked about Mariota. So much talent. Uh, Jesse, I think you might even argue he's the most talented of Chip Kelly's uh, quarterbacks. Since he's been there in 2007, no question about it. It's because of his size. It's because of his athleticism. And, guys, I think he's the best thrower Chip Kelly has had, and that includes Dennis Dixon as well. And when you look at a play like that, how many times have we seen that on Oregon's offense in the past? We haven't. Yeah. You're going to get man-to-man -man on the outside. You can't defeat that throw as a corner. So if they keep running the football like they do, they add that dimension, I'm sorry. That's unstoppable. You spoke from a defensive guy. Yeah. You got to get back there and sack him. That's the only shot you have. But he throws it so quick. He got no shot. It's annoying. Maldonado drives Ross into the end zone. And Ross is hit and stopped <laughs> at about the 15-yard line. Keenan Lowe was the first guy there. Arizona State's defense is so concerned about Oregon running the football. Go back and look at this example. So many black jerseys in the middle of the field. That allows one-on-one -on -one opportunities outside for the true freshman Addison doing a nice job on a delayed fade route. Showed tremendous patience and a perfect throw from the redshirt freshman quarterback. They beat the best cover guy Arizona State has, too, Devron Carr. Now Arizona State has fallen into a hole. Lost a couple of defensive linemen. Down by eight. Marion Grice. Good pick up on first down. Gets maybe four. Arizona State has to stay on the field right now and buy their defense some time. The defense was just on the field for 14 snaps. They're down their two best D linemen. You have to convert some first downs. And it's not about time of possession. It's about snaps. Yeah. Don't look at the number of Oregon possesses the ball. It's how much the defense has to apply effort. Taylor Kelly keeps it. Picked up. Two, maybe three. It'll be third down in about three. You know, guys, Taylor Kelly's not the flashiest quarterback in the country, but I believe he's got that it factor. He's accurate, makes good decisions, but he can scramble. Not the best athlete, but he's going to have to make some hay running the football tonight as well. And to David's point a moment ago, this play is large. Yes. It's early. I get that. I don't want Oregon to get it back this quickly for Arizona State. DJ Foster is going to be stopped short of the first down in the zone 24. <laughs> Tony Washington made the stop, and right now, oh, wow. looking to the sideline, and oh, I don't see the punt team coming wow. out. Wow. Here they come. Well, Josh Hubner, the punter, is on the field in the huddle, but Taylor Kelly's still in the huddle as well. Now, Kelly's been used as a pooch punter, but this is not a pooch punting situation, and Hubner is in, and they are in punt formation. Ooh. Oh, Hubner. We're trying to make sure that Oregon didn't have anybody back there to try to flip the field, and there are whistles all over the place. Oregon called a timeout. Prior to the snap, timeout, Oregon. That's their first charge timeout. It's a pretty smart plan by Todd Graham, but Oregon calls timeout before the Sun Devils can flip the field. Fourth and one when you come back. And Sparky's not in the only seat of his britches caught on his pitchfork in the early going. BCS Countdown, hope you'll join the three of us and our buddy Kirk Kirkstreet as we exclusively unveil the new BCS standings. 8.30 Eastern Sunday night on ESPN. Followed up with another half hour on ESPNU. BCS Countdown presented by Tostitos. Ducks a little bit of a surprise at number three in the initial BCS standings. Arizona State more conventionally punting it away. And... and the Anthony Thomas threw up a fair catch signal and then took off with it, but the whistle's blue, and it'll be at the 22-yard line. Uh, Samantha, what do you have on Junior Agnelli? Yeah, good news for the Sun Devil defense. He will return. I just spoke to head athletic trainer Bill Martin. He said he has a right shoulder injury. They added a shoulder stabilizer that he used to wear. Hasn't been wearing it recently, but he's going to be back out there. All right, Sam, we'll look for Junior, who's number five. He's not on the field at the moment. Of course, they're just joining us. Will Sutton, their best defensive player, hurt while forcing a fumble. Kenyon Barner, who's been 
The best player on the field in the early going. He's over 100 yards already for the night. That's another big run on first down for the Ducks. And we get wrapped up in the Anthony Thomas's big play ability, which we should. I mean, he's amazing. But Kenyon Barner, that short area quickness, that cut and go, it's pretty filthy, too. I mean, he's, he's pretty daggum good. He's too. still one of the most explosive players in the country. I mean, yeah. there's weapons so all over the So pair him with yard. six. That's really good. That's a good. That's a pretty good duo. Mariota firing into the flat. He has Hawkins, and Hawkins will be stopped just short of the first down. It'll be second and short. Arizona State defensively has to get off the field. Two ways to do that. You get turnovers like they did on the first play of the game, but they have to be better on the first first down of each possession for Oregon. If they can get negative or zero yards on that first down, they could potentially save themselves four or five snaps on the drive. That. And DeAnthony Thomas hasn't gotten loose yet. <laughs> Davon Coleman makes the tackle. DeAnthony picks up the first down. That was his fourth touch of the night. And that last drive was a long eating drive, like a Colin Klein drive for Oregon, four minutes. Fifth touch of the night for DeAnthony and a brilliant play. How about the play from Chris Young, a transfer from Arizona Western Junior College, making a play in the backfield. And there it is, Jesse. Minus play on first down. They have to do it. You see a tremendous job here being more physical at the point of attack than tight end Colt Lyerla. And how about that, making a one-on-one -on -one open field tackle with DeAnthony Thomas? Not easy to do. Now you give, your chance, give yourselves a chance to get off. Yeah, that was a great play by Young. Ducks right back. Mariota pulls it. Marcus, first down and a lot more. How explosive is this freshman? You see why he won the job down to the 35-yard line. On tape, we have not yet seen Marcus Mariota pull the football as often as we've even seen early in this game tonight on these zone replays. And you see that speed. It's becoming a factor. It's because on tape, Chip Kelly goes, I don't pull the ball a lot. And then on tape, he comes out and goes, wait, I'm going to pull it. There's no right answer. The Anthony Thomas, sixth touch of the night. Flag is coming in late. DeAnthony picked up about nine. Well, let's see what the penalty is. Michael Batlin leading our Pac-12 crew tonight. Penalty goes against Oregon, negating the nine-yard pickup. Oregon, one of the most penalized teams in the country. Surprisingly, after Arizona State's led the country or been worst in the country through the last three years in penalty yardage, they're among the least penalized teams in America under Todd Graham and, this year. And they're going to have to be disciplined tonight because you can't help Oregon beat you. Penalties and turnovers just don't work. Well, the spot foul makes it first and 17. The give. Barner. Crashing ahead down to about just inside the 32. Brandon McGee on the tackle, and Oregon trying to pick up the tempo on second down. Back to Barner. Barner's a couple yards short of the first down. It'll be third down. Now, Oregon, you know, they, they flash the signs, and everybody knows what it means. They got to they figure out the right sign for the call. <laughs> well, who, I mean, where do you look? Is it the board? Is it one of the backup quarterbacks? Is it one of the coaches? There's a lot of chaos on that sideline. Here comes the blue crab. Watch out. It's deadly. My eyes on Arturo Gotti there, Mickey Ward, one of their epic battles. You know, there's a theory that all of those boards are dummy boards, but I don't think Chip would put Irish Mickey Ward on a dummy board. Your face is on one of those boards too, Chris Davis. Scored last year, I'd like to point out. <laughs> Ginyan Barner has the first down. Oregon already tonight has had so much success on this inside zone running play, and that was the one play that Arizona State really wanted to be sure they took away from Oregon. They haven't been able to do it. Mariota, tackled by Davon Coleman. One of the hardest things to do against Oregon is sub. I mean, that you don't they don't give you time to run off the field, and you see it right there. Arizona State trying to run a defensive lineman on, trying to stay fresh. 12 yeah. players on the field on defense. They're trying, it, but it, they don't let you. It would be a good idea it, to let them have 12. There is no foul in the play oh. for illegal substitution. Play was legal. Yeah, but there was 12 guys on the field. I can promise you that. There are already guys on Arizona State with their hands on their hips because they're not fresh. 14 plays the last drive. This is already now the 11th play of this draft. It's Paul Randolph in the gold shirt. He's the defensive coordinator. Graham's background as a defensive coach as well. 
Daryl Hawkins. Close to where the first down mark would be, and they're going to mark. They're going to give him the first down. Here is Randolph, who's been with Graham at various stops over the last several years. Been together about a decade. Blitzing, attacking scheme that right now Oregon's handling. His, their base defense is blitz. It, yeah, it's I mean, pressure. <laughs> hey, line up. Somebody's coming from somewhere. You just got to figure it out. After a 14-play drive, this about to be the 12th snap. Mariota into the flat, the wide open Hawkins. Hawkins going toward the end zone, and he'll have the first down, but not the touchdown. First and goal again for the Ducks. Marcus Mariota is doing an excellent job tonight handling Arizona State's blitz. On that last play, he saw a blitzing defender coming from the top of the screen. You see here, he audibles. He's going to spit this football out really quick, anticipating the pressure coming off the slot. Puts his back in motion. Fake handoff, there's the pressure you see. Gets him caught in the middle of the field. There's a wide open receiver on the outside. Great job by the redshirt freshman. Barner, and he'll be stopped short of the goal line. It appears, yep, they're coming in and marking him down short. Second and goal coming from the Ducks. And this is the one area, the short yardage situation, goal line situations where people call into question Oregon's physical nature. Quick snap, Barner, touchdown, Oregon. Precision right now, boys, after that turnover on the opening possession on the second play from scrimmage for the Ducks. So much for the question of... The prior play is under further review. Prior to the snap. Now, this is, this is going to be, this is going to be interesting. I, as, I can only assume if they're looking at the prior play, they're trying to see if Barner got into yeah. the end zone. Well, they snapped it so quickly, he did get in the next time. So well, either way, well, it, this most recent snap obviously won't count. And the score goes back to 15-7. Take another look at this. Just a piece of the football has to pass or has to touch the plane. He, spin, he spins out right late, right here. He kind of spins out. You can't see anything from that angle. There it is. There it is. And that's close. Looks interesting. A lot like Stephon Taylor, Taylor at the very end of that Notre Dame-Stanford finale in overtime. And another thing is, too, if they didn't call it where he was, you know, his forward momentum was stopped. But you see him getting pulled back now. He twists. No. Stop maybe there. Reach. Hmm. If, the forward, if they didn't call forward momentum, i say. Well, if the whistle hadn't blown, too, and I don't think it did. No. What do you think? I think it's a score. But, guys, in the big picture, I think that answers the question about the poise of this football team. You know, playing on the road, the first true road game, you get a turnover on the very first snap, and then you give up a touchdown on your opponent's very first offensive snap. And here they are on the doorstep of potentially having – well, at least 22 points, yeah. maybe 23 if they get two. You know, the one thing I want to bring up, it applies in the Stephon Taylor play in the Stanford-Notre Dame game on Saturday and certainly on this play too. You want to give the runner every opportunity. At the same time, a big emphasis has been player safety. Yeah. Barner was moving backwards mm -hmm. there. If you continue to let that play go, then how can you blame a defender if he comes flying in and takes a shot at a virtually defenseless player? You know, officials... I think erring on the side of caution when forward progress is stopped is the right way to go. In a play like this, the Taylor play was a little bit different in South Bend on Saturday, but this one, Barner, Barner actually went back. It After looked like a yard or so. The rolling on the field stands. Short of the line to game, short of the goal line. Timer. Freeze reset the game clock to one minute and 55 seconds. So we'll go back to a buck 55 to go, and the ball will be spotted inside the one-yard line. Oregon snapped it a moment ago, and Barner did indeed get in, but the whistle blew before the snap to review the previous play. So Oregon will try second and goal again. Todd Graham was just giving his defense a passionate speech on the sideline to see if they can bow their backs here. Huge down. Barner. 
Hit in the backfield. It'll be third and goal for Oregon. I think that review helped this defense also because it gave them the chance to get their win back. You see the way they, just, in. they just jumped <laughs> off the ball right there. Wow. Yeah, it takes something like that. Timeouts. Yeah. Buying a little bit of time. You think they can get a replay more often? <laughs> Let them get closer to the goal line. Hey, replay that every time. And Brian Bennett, the backup quarterback, has checked into the game, and Colt Lyerla, the power back, is also in the game for the Duck. Bennett, there was a miscommunication, and Bennett now flips it out in the waiting moments, and it's a touchdown for the Ducks to Mariota. How about the improvisational skills of the backup quarterback? Well, there's, wow. There's a wrinkle we had not yet seen on what? tape. <laughs> the, 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 the almost get tackled wrinkle and <laughs> hey, throw the ball on the hey, fly. Chip didn't we, draw that one up. We saw this play a little bit earlier in the game before, but the same personnel grouping at the very end. Heads up play by Brian Bennett, able to keep his feet, keep his balance, keep his eyes open. The rolling on the field is a completed forward pass and a touchdown. And that can go forward because he was behind the line of scrimmage. Right. Yeah. Tell you what, man. <laughs> Brian, that's a good story, too. Bennett, remember last year, took the snaps when, when Darren Thomas gets hurt, thinks about transferring before the season starts. He really provides some depth. And if he can give a little red zone package and be ready, because he's another guy that can hurt you with his feet and his arm. Rob Beard on for the extra point. Beard remains perfect on extra points, and we are not yet at the end of the first quarter, and number three, Oregon, has run to a 22-7 lead. Bennett, oh, just showing off. Little hook pass to Mariota for the touchdown. Goal and extra point kick. To date, Allstate has contributed more than $2.8 million in scholarship money. Oregon's getting set to kick off, and this is going to be perhaps the most important possession of the night for Arizona State. Here's why I say that. Oregon is on pace for 132 snaps as Rashad Ross brings it out of the end zone. Todd Graham said this week they couldn't survive 80 snaps with the Ducks on offense. They've run a lot of them, 14 play drive, 15 play drive as we check in quickly with Scott Van Pelt. And an update on SMU and Houston, Garrett Gilbert. At the controls, he finds Jeremy Johnson for the touchdown. The Ponies, they've got 28 of their own, but that's at the half. At this rate, Oregon might double that up. Back to you in the desert. Scott, they might. Arizona State has to try to find a way to control the ball. Taylor Kelly, a lot of company, and now he's got a little bit of room if he's got the speed to get to the corner. He does to the 25, and he takes a hit. He stopped just short of the 25. Deion Jordan staying at home making a play. It is very important right now that Arizona State does not look at the scoreboard on offense. It's easy as a quarterback when you're down two possessions to try and start pressing. Get it all back at once. Can't do it. Want to start forcing footballs into double coverage? Bad idea. Lots of football to play. Just run your offense. Second and three. Cameron Marshall gets stuffed. And he got the nose across the line of scrimmage before Wade Kaylee Keithy was there to knock him down. And if I were Arizona State, I'd let this clock run out. Let the defense catch him. <laughs> As would there. I. That's exactly what they're going to do. Uh, they asked Todd Graham what he would do if things went wrong early. He said exactly what you did. Tell the guys not to look at the scoreboard. We'll look at it and tell you that the Ducks are up by 15. Arizona State has it when you come back. Pepper's road to the championship to start the second quarter. Number three, Oregon on top of Arizona State, 22 to seven. Sun Devils facing a third down and two.
Taylor Kelly throws an interception to Seiko Lacumbo. Had a chance to get it back. Instead, he'll set up the Ducks on the doorstep, and Arizona State's reeling and in a world of trouble. This is one of the more inaccurate throws I've seen from Taylor Kelly so far this year. Normally very, very accurate. They're going to try and roll the pocket to the right, get Taylor away from all of the pressure. He's got a running back, or he's got his receiver, Jamal Miles, out in the flat. He just throws that too far behind him. And Arizona State puts a receiver in motion. They try to get the number advantage, but you see Lacumbo go straight to the flats, right on the snap of the ball, anticipated a great play. Lacumbo's Canadian from Abbotsville, British Columbia. Sure, got to drop that in there, huh? Great hands, of course. They gave it to DeAnthony Thomas, his oh. seventh touch of the night. So how many is that away, Reese? One. Next touch for DeAnthony should be a touchdown. So you're guaranteeing that. The next touch will be a touchdown. Well, see, guys, I got it. Go on a limb, Reese. In my yeah. numbers, in his career, one out of every 11 offensive touchdowns is a score. So he's, he's got some wiggle touches. Room. Offensive. I'm counting kick returns, all right, too. All right. Dak will have to wait because that, that was Kenyon Barner with the carry. So. I was about to say he would have to wait as Barner scores again, but Barner was stopped short, so it's third and goal. And he will. Kenyon Barner into the end zone again, and this could be the knockout punch. Ducks now up three touchdowns. So number three is rolling on the road. What a night Barner's had, his 10th career 100-yard gain. He's already 12th in the nation in rushing. 71-yard touchdown run highlighting his night. And it's taken Oregon about 16 minutes to assume control. This blackout crowd at Sun Devil Stadium, and now the extra point makes it 29-7 to and 29 consecutive points for the visiting Ducks. Watching number three roll on the road tonight and then Saturday night in prime time on ESPN, college football prime time, presented by Hampton Hotels. Number one, Alabama taking on Tennessee, just as mandated in Leviticus, playing in the third Saturday in October. Alabama, the powerful defense, and Tyler Bray leads the SEC in touchdown passes. Are you, you know what, you challenged me on DeAnthony Yeah. Thomas. You've been saying the last two days, you smell the upset here. I'm, I'm smelling the first test for Alabama secondary is what I'm smelling. I, I think that Tyler Bray in this offense, I think they're going to have some success. I know everybody's wiping Tennessee out the window, but they got some skill on offense. Justin Hunter, Patterson. I'm not saying they can play a lick of defense, because <laughs> they can't. Say. They are god awful you know, on D. But I want to see that secondary, which we've all said, oh, it's better than last year's, blah, 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 this. They'll get tested. That defense is giving up 32 points a game in Tennessee. That's the most since 1893. Is that a long time ago? That's a long time ago for Tennessee. And Alejandro Maldonado puts a foot to it. Rashad Ross will take a knee, bring it out to the 25 as Arizona State will try to regain its composure. Take a look at tonight's BCS standings brought to you by Tostitos, two SEC teams on top. Much to the chagrin of people outside the SEC, it's a little bit different this year than last year when we had Alabama and LSU in the championship game. Alabama and Florida would only play if both make it to the SEC championship game. I think a loss for either would be difficult to overcome that late. So the Ducks don't have anything to worry about, I don't think, in terms of the teams in front of them. Mm -hmm. Do they have something to worry about with the teams behind right. them? Should Notre Dame or Kansas That's State right. finish undefeated? That's the big question. And your answer is? They don't. With their schedule, Oregon does not. If they went out, they're good. Taylor Kelly, whose last pass was his first interception in 103 attempts, is chased by Taylor Hart, and it'll be second down and 10. Well, we were anticipating tonight to be a big challenge for Oregon to help determine just how good they are. And there's a lot of football left to go, so TBD. We're going to find out how good they really are in the month of November, playing at USC, a Cal defense following week that has given them issues yeah. in the last two years. Stanford at home and finishing up in the Civil War at a surprising Oregon State team. E.J. Foster, nothing. Taylor Hart was first there, third and long. Taylor Hart's a bad boy up front. I'm, I'm telling you, he's, he's physical, plays hard, really like watching him play. A lot of they rotate. you got to realize this duck defense, they rotate 20-plus guys flying in and out. 
really got a lot of depth up front and, and in the back everywhere. Well, one guy that is missing from that front is Isaac Remington, who was suspended for suspicion of a DUI. Look at the overload to the offensive right for Arizona State, the left of Oregon. If they have an audible for a quarterback sneak, now would be a good time. Now they balance <laughs> things out a bit, and Lacumbo now going back. 25 is moving all over the place. Deion Jordan's after Kelly, but Taylor escapes. Being chased, mm. tries to throw it back into traffic. A dangerous throw and almost intercepted on the deflection by Brian Jackson. Avery Patterson also got a hand on it. It's fourth and nine. Okay, tell me who's coming, Jesse Palmer. Look at all these guys up front. Look at on the right side. No, we're going to go to the other side. No, we're going to drop. Corners coming up. Look at the safety come up in the box. Look at they do such a great job of disguising everything they do. And that's why we said they can't be in predictable passing situations on third down. They got to do a better job winning on first and second because we talk about the pressure Arizona State can bring. Oregon can bring a lot too. What touch is this, Reese Davis? Uh, this is going to be eight. Okay. The Anthony Thomas. Fair catch. So he's going to be a little bit, although, that, you know, that is only a fair catch. Technically, still one more touch for an opportunity to go for the touchdown. The Ducks offense already shown its explosive capabilities. Oregon has it when you come back. Straight points, three straight three and outs for Arizona State. They had a turnover in the middle of that, and the Ducks have it back. Looking for more. And a little movement on the left side. It's about the only thing wrong that's happened in a while, huh? False start. Offense number 63. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. So we've talked a lot about the pace at which Oregon plays. They average 15.2 seconds of possession per play against Arizona State. And you see that's fastest of any team. So we're going to show you by following Arizona State linebacker Brandon McGee on this series just how difficult it is to keep up. And DeAnthony Thomas is swarmed under in the backfield. Davon Coleman was first there. That's the one thing Arizona State's done well on defense. And here is McGee. We'll see how quickly Oregon can get to the line. And here's the clock and how much time he has between plays. And this is going to be a little misleading because Arizona State has yet another oh. defensive lineman. Wow. Slow to get up. It's Davon Coleman who on the second play from scrimmage recovered an Oregon fumble. That on that play, Will Sutton was hurt, lost for the game. Subsequently, Junior Agnelli, their best defensive end, hurt. We haven't seen him back. And now Davon Coleman, who's listed on the depth chart as a backup to Agnelli, he's limping toward the sideline. So the plan coming into tonight was for this defense to rotate between five and seven defensive linemen. Now three have gone down. So at the most, you're only rotating in four up front. And we talk about the pace all the time. You understand, this is nothing like you're ever used to. Most teams you play, you got 40 seconds between each play. When you only have 15 seconds and you're a big boy up front, it is such a strain. And you've seen all kinds of tactics in the past on how to stop it for them. Second and 16, pressure coming from the edge of Mario to pulled it. Great speed for the freshman, and he's about to make a house call. Aloha means touchdown. Eighty-six yards for Mariota. There's another example of Mariota seeing pressure coming off both edges here. He's just going to pull this. He sees the heat come. No give. They got two guys taking the running back, and there is the speed. He's 6'4", 211 pounds, the long strides, the flying Hawaiian. He is gone. You want to blitz Oregon? That's what, that's what will happen. If you blitz Oregon, get a little bit aggressive, bye-bye. And, and perhaps lost in this, Mariota has thrown a touchdown pass. He's run for a touchdown. And remember the improvisational play by the backup quarterback, Brian Bennett, Mariota caught the touchdown pass from Bennett, and now they've scored 30 or more points in 20 consecutive games. And look, 
I'm not going to try to fool you. This thing's over. It, it's a blowout, 36 <laughs> to 7, and, and they're not coming it's back. It's gone. So what kind of statement are the Ducks making by taking a 5-1 and one team, highly ranked defense, and making mincemeat out of it? Uh, th they've reloaded uh, on offense. You know, I, I go back big picture. I go back to last year when they lost Aaron Thomas, they lost Michael James, they lost Lavazier 2 and A, and they lost uh, David Paulson and two linemen up front. Everyone wondered. What would happen to this offense? Well, tonight was supposed to be the toughest challenge they were going to see on defense. And it, it struggles when Will Sutton goes out and yeah. Junior Agnelli go out. But this quarterback, he's pretty good. And it's these pretty players tough. on the offense are pretty good. This offense is legit. You know, the thing about the quarterback, and you, you know, they had him in camp. Marcus Mariota hadn't started a high school game uh -huh. until his senior year at St. Louis High, which is a notorious quarterback factory on the island of Hawaii. Jason Gesser, Timmy Chang, Jeremiah Masoli all played there. But they saw the great athleticism and the skill, and, and he's putting on a show. That reminded me of the play in the spring game when he went 80-plus yards and yeah. won the job. I mean, that's that's what you had to look forward to. Not as great of a passer early on as Darren Thomas, but a much better runner, long strides. And you know what? One thing that we're going to get into, because obviously we're going to have plenty of time tonight, he's just straight chill. He never he never gets too high, never gets too low. He, he's seriously back in the pocket sometimes like, yeah, that's kind of cool. I'm just going to I'm gonna sling it, dude. He's got that Aloha <laughs> chill mode. Yeah, it's, it's all good, man. Making a pie back here, you know, just get, chilling. Give him the Shaka sign, right? He listens to Hawaiian music, he, he told me this week before games. He, he likes to chill. Some guys like to get amped before a game. Marcus prefers, you know, just kind of relaxing. And Oregon could relax, so chances are they won't because Chip Kelly really doesn't allow it as Cameron Marshall stops for a short gain on first down. Now, Arizona State's defense is gassed. This is a matter of pride now for the Sun Devils. The offense has to help them out a little bit yeah. here by, by staying on the field for a while. Well, and, and Oregon's defense doesn't usually get enough credit, but the first play was bad. They were put in a bad position with the fumble and then absolutely responded since that point with shutout D. There was the good drive and the missed field goal after that. And that ball is tipped into the air. And that one's intercepted. Second interception of the night thrown by Kelly and Avery Patterson. Avery Patterson almost oh. had a pick six for the third straight game. He did it against Wazoo. He did it against UW. And Avery stopped just short of the goal line. And Oregon's about to go in again. Arizona State uncharacteristically playing so undisciplined right now. It's not because of penalties, but it's because of turnovers here. Taylor Kelly trying to fit this football into his tight end, Chris Coyle, but there's no window to throw into. Linebacker able to make a tip. Yeah, that's Tyler Coleman. Great job. He steps up to play run, sees the pass, drops back, touches it. And remember, Patterson filling in for John Boyette. I thought he was the, one of the best and most underrated players in the country. They lost him to some knee problems for the season, and Mr. Patterson's like, I got this. Give to Kenyon Barner, and Barner is into the end zone. And if Chip Kelly doesn't choose to call off the dogs, as he has in the second half all season, Oregon might score 100 tonight. Yeah, I'm gonna so be... stick around and see if Oregon <laughs> scores 100. <laughs> hey, that other game, Seahawks and 49ers, they're not going to score that much. Don't even worry about that game. Barner goes in for his third touchdown you of know, the night. You mentioned this defense, guys. I think it's the best defense that Oregon has had in the Chip Kelly area, and one of the reasons why is they force so many turnovers. They give the football back yeah. to this explosive offense. They have now 19 takeaways on the season. It's just it's the perfect combination. Oregon is making Arizona State look like Arkansas State did in the opener when the Ducks had a 50-3 to lead at halftime. It's 43-7. to The defense setting up another one, thanks to Avery Patterson. Experience truly great engineering today at your authorized dealer and direct TV. Now get NFL Sunday ticket included at no extra charge when you switch. Call 1 800 Direct TV. If you want a burger in Tempe, Arizona, no place better than the Chuck Box for the last 40 years. And we use mesquite charcoal. They serve close to 150,000 burgers per year. They've sent a couple up here to the booth as. 
Oregon is making ground beef out of Arizona State in the first half, 43 to seven. Rashad Ross has been busy returning kickoff tonight. And busy getting tackled. In the 30 yard line, so now, this, this burger that Jesse has, who, who is a noted food connoisseur, by the way, this is the Tijuana Torpedo. I think that's a the bell pepper on it. It is. I'm, I'm, I'm going in. All right. We'll have to pay you to take a bite of this right now. A lot, and I'm not going to do it. <laughs> hey, hey, come on, big boy. This Ooh, is like nice. when you were playing at Georgia and a nice burger. Yeah. You know, a little weight. It's a long time ago. <laughs> you know what? Big time. Solid? You got a little big bit on, on the mic. Come on, leave it there. Leave it there. I'm, I'm, gonna tell, I'm starving to death, and if I weren't afraid to leave the play-by-play -play in Pollock's hands, I'd be chowing on that burger. <laughs> Pollock, you want to take the burger or the play-by-play? DJ Foster stop for no game. Play-by-play play before I take the burger. <laughs> we, we should point out, David, after trimming down, obviously looks far more like a slot receiver now than a defensive lineman. <laughs> well, the guy's eyes Very to conscientious to. about about what he eats. Yeah, now. don't let the good looks fool you, man. <laughs> oh, you boy. still got that mean streak. Jesse and I, on the other hand, put it in front of us. And take care of it. Sam, too, by the way. Sam enjoys a good meal. Taylor Kelly slides for the first down. Got a little hit there late. That was Tyson Coleman coming in. Probably fortunate. It wasn't a vicious hit, but probably fortunate he didn't draw the flag. Well, Todd Graham's going to find out a lot about his football team right now. This is the first time this year that his team obviously has been in a situation like this. So, ten and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. You're down 43 to 7. Do you quit? Do you fold or do you fight? We'll find that out right now. Sun Devils haven't converted a third down yet. Now they have. Cameron Marshall goes to the 45-yard line. Sam, Sam you, you enjoyed the burgers from, uh, from the truck box there? Yeah, thanks for throwing me under the bus, Reese. I apparently, that's what happens when a game is uh, a blowout like this. Why, why is that throwing you under the bus? I, <laughs> I mean, do enjoy a meal. That's you're, actually and you're very, true. You're very, you're very skinny, so, I mean, that's okay. Oh, well, thank you. you to. Is this really what this has come to? I actually have a report after this play. Okay. Taylor Kelly pulls it after putting it in Marshall's belly, and he picks up two or three, and... Sam, what do you have for us? Yes, Reese, I'm a professional. Um, I would like to tell you that Todd Graham, this is actually the first drive where he's been able to give his whole pump-up speech to his defense. Every time he keeps getting cut off, the defense has to run back on the field. But I'll tell you, the guy who's taking the leadership position right now, Will Sutton, instead of moping, he's up and down, crutching around, trying to encourage his teammates. But it's tough to do right now. And no question, Sam. And it, very disappointing night, obviously. All start. 87 offense. Five-yard penalty, main second down. Not only because of the score, but because, as we've talked about, the, the one advantage that Arizona State felt it had was the fact that Will Sutton potentially could be disruptive to Oregon. Yeah. Over Chip Kelly's tenure, the teams that have knocked off the Ducks have had guys like Will Sutton who've disrupted them. Nick Fairley in the championship game yeah. for Auburn comes to mind for sure. The LSU defensive line is Kelly, fires, and... It's complete up to the 50-yard line. It was Richard Smith, the freshman, <laughs> making the catch. Ohio State in the Rose Bowl right. at yeah. the end of the 2009 season. I was so curious to watch tonight because Arizona State defensively isn't very big up front in the defensive line, but they're so active and they're so athletic and when they're healthy, they're so disruptive. And we're not going to get a chance to really see how that works out with two of those key guys missing right yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, he had two plays where Sutton got to play and a tackle for a loss and a fumble, and they recovered it. So obviously a good start. And Kelly, Marshall just gets drilled. Avery Patterson, who had the interception on the last possession. It's Marshall for two-yard loss, fourth down coming. How, how about this stick in your face in the fan? Drop back into coverage. That's a grown man, too, now. Cameron Marshall, I mean, it's not a small dude. Mm. Oregon's got some dudes on defense now, too. So Arizona State, dudes. fourth down, why not? They're down 43-7. They look to Mike Norvell, the offensive coordinator. And we mentioned earlier that Taylor Kelly, had adept at pooch punt. You might have seen Norvell in the corner of your screen waving it off. And they look to see what they have. And Kevin Ozier, who caught the touchdown pass to start the game, downs it inside the five-yard line. And if you want to get in shape, why not be the Oregon mascot? Push up for every point. Boy, he's going to have some packs by the time this is over.
a chance to go virtually the length of the field. They're on their own three, up 43-7 on Arizona State. Mariota up top. Josh Huff. And that's incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. Osahan Irabor on the coverage. Chip Kelly's not taking his foot off the gas here. <laughs> here he is inside his own five yard line. He's up by 30 something. I'm not He's gonna taking a shot deep down the field with Josh up. There you go. I'm not going to gripe about the pass interference call at that point. Yeah. Well, I will say this. First half, no reason in yeah, the no, world no. to take your foot Yo, off. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying he shouldn't. I played for Steve Spurrier. Yeah. I, I mean, we, we'd be beating guys by 60 and throwing the football in the fourth quarter. Well, if you don't like it, stop it. Uh, that's what yeah. a lot of people believe in. I don't really see what's wrong with it. Jimmer Fredette's watching the game. He says, can anyone stop Oregon? They look unstoppable every week. Hey, Expert he's, analysis uh, from the Jimmer. Hey, he's used to dropping 50 against New Mexico a couple years ago. Didn't he drop 52? He did. He this this isn't enough. He needs nice. more points, doesn't he? Thinks he might get him. Third down and seven. One guy who has not gotten loose tonight is DeAnthony Thomas. Carl Bradford there to swallow him up. And it's fourth down. And we'll see an appearance from the Oregon punting unit. And Todd Graham, it, Graham staying behind his defense, showing right. some enthusiasm here. And we talked about whether or not his team would quit being down so early in this football game. You see there the defense still playing hard. They're down guys. They're very thin right now. But a lot of effort still in this game. Small Miles standing right at his 50-yard line to return it for Arizona State. From his 36. And Miles knocked down by the Seco Lacumbo as we check in with Scott Van Pelt. We Sports Center right now, presented by Coors Light. The Detroit Tigers storm into the World Series. Third time in seven years they've knocked the New York Yankees out of it. Cabrera, perhaps an MVP with a homer. Delman Young takes home the most valuable player. Might it be the Cardinals on the other side? We've seen that a number of times. Cardinals with a lead right now over the Giants. All right, Scott, Marcus Mariota on the red phone. Only the second time tonight, the Oregon offense has not been successful. The other coming on their opening drive when they fumbled on the second snap. Mariota's been brilliant since. Taylor Kelly firing, and there's a little traffic coming across the way. Terrence Mitchell, the defensive back, coming over. And if you're following Twitter, the freshman from Honolulu is trending. <laughs> He's the X factor and he's the difference for this offense. I think because of him, in the Chip Kelly era, this is the hardest, most difficult Oregon offense to defend. You know, we, we see Barner and we see DeAnthony Thomas. What about Mariota? Taylor Kelly inside the 45. No flag coming on that as the fans thought perhaps Kelly was hit a little bit late. The one thing I would say about, about that, Jesse, I agree with you in terms of talent. They have shown a propensity to turn football over. Mm -hmm. They've turned it over a lot yeah. in the early going this year. Yeah, and I think that's – I agree with the talent. I don't agree with up until this point that he's already better than Darren Thomas. He has some things he needs to work on. That fade he threw for the touchdown, he starts doing more of that. You see the feet. He's not as quick in his decision-making process as Darren Thomas was. Darren Thomas was also in the offense for three right, years. Right, yeah, yeah. I'm experience. not saying he's better. I'm saying he's a better thrower than anybody Chip Kelly's had so far with respect to his mechanics and his ability to throw in the football. I also think he's the best runner of any quarterback Chip Kelly's had, but he just needs experience. Kelly to DJ Foster, you couldn't handle it. It'll be second and ten. Avery Patterson is Avery Patterson's running wild in that Oregon defense at the moment. This is also the best defense Chip Kelly has had since he's been at Oregon. And one reason is the experience. He's got nine up oh! starting on this unit. But he's got tremendous depth. A guy like Avery Patterson that comes in for an injured John Boyette at the start of the year who was the leader of this defense. Well, it's interesting you say that. What are SEC fans? They're turning this game on right now. Oh, it's Arizona State. You know, they can't. Oregon's defense never going to stop anybody. It was a couple years ago in the National Championship game. They held Auburn to 22 points. Yeah. You know, I mean, which was a great Cam Newton offense that ran rough shot through the SEC. So I think this defense is a little bit more talented than it was a couple of years ago. And this, this team, stop looking at them like they're cute. You know, they got cute little uniforms and stuff. They can play D and they can play O. They're not cute because they're finally big. 
I mean, they look like an NFL defense when you look at them. We're on the field before the game. They got two defensive tackles that are 300 pounds. They got two linebackers that are about 240. They got safeties that are two bills, corners that are six feet tall. Chip Kelly's defenses have never looked like that. And the defense trying to stop a third and eight. And Deion Jordan with another sack. And that man right there is as talented as anybody in the country. I mean, they call him, what, the praying mantis? Yeah. I mean, to be that tall, as, as tall as he is coming around the edge and as quick as he is, he really is. He's a six foot seven, 250 pound machine coming off. And There's hey, quick calling Chip, quick call to Chip Kelly's defense. Yeah, That's you're right. Chip Kelly's right Kelly defense. It's Chip Kelly's offense. Give my man Aliotti credit. Caffeinated defense, baby. He's got some guys out there, boy. 12 men on the field for more than three seconds. Five yard penalty. Can they play with 13? Remains fourth down. 14. As Mike Norvell, whose offense has been stifled for the most part by Aliotti's defense. You know, Aliotti, a fixture in Eugene. This is his 21st season. He's been there for a better part of a longer period of time. He had a respite in the middle where he went to the NFL and went to UCLA for one year and then had the opportunity to come back to Eugene. He's putting together a defense. Is Taylor Kelly going to go for the pooch punt again? A defense that, in terms of yards per play, when the game is still within four touchdowns, ranks right up with the likes of Alabama and LSU. They're shutting down Arizona State right now, and the Ducks will have it back with four and a half to go in the first half. early had a fumble on the first snap of the game almost coughed it up again a little bit later but then he went into straight aloha chill mode found his rhythm found his composure receiving gets touchdown pose, gets a receiving catch and shows you the wheels he's already run for 132 yards guys the anthony thomas short catch up to about the 25 yard line is Mariota, the single game record for quarterback rushing yards, Reggie Ogburn, way back in 1980. And if Marcus stays in the game long enough, he'll have a chance to eclipse that number. Well, that's the thing, too, about this, um, about this offense and defense. They haven't played the first units a lot. They've had to, you know, the defensive stats are kind of a little bit inflated because they've their twos and their threes have given up some points late in game. So it is kind of tough. And you know what? Down the road, you wonder if that hurts them a little bit, too, because when you grind out four quarters and you have to play a lot a lot of guys for that many extended minutes, sometimes if you're not used to it, it'll take a toll on you. Chip's like, yeah, I got more. <laughs> got more for you. Here is Byron Marshall. And Marshall's going to have some bragging rights with his big brother Cameron, who's the starting running back for Arizona State, and having some fun back and forth this week but it's uh it's been all the freshman from san jose at least his side tonight he's going to get a chance to carry the ball you, some you thing. talk about the depth that oregon has and so we talk about kenyon barner and d'anthony thomas and now marcus mariota is making plays in the zone read game what about this true freshman byron marshall his physicality i mean he's a stud too already run for 324 yards tonight that exceeds their season average which is fourth best in the country Arizona State, top 40 rush defense and a top 10 total defense. Getting gashed and delivering a big hit on Marshall is Brandon McGee. The one thing, and the, the question was still out about Arizona State's defense. It only faced one offense ranking the top 100 of the FBS. That was Cal. And four backup quarterbacks to start the season. But, and I agree with that, Reese, but... When you watch guys like Will Sutton right. who make plays and consistently live in backfields, I think you can look a little bit beyond the numbers, but that's what, that's what Oregon does so well. They're not big. They're, these guys aren't Alabama's up front. They're not big and physical maulers, but they have a system where they kind of get you going one way, they lean on you, they create a, a tiny little crack that needs to be about 12 inches for Barner and DeAnthony yeah. Thomas because they're so, so small and so explosive, and, and they take advantage of it. This is going to be the Ducks' 48th play of the first half. The Anthony Thomas is stopped. That's about the only thing that's gone <laughs> according to plan for Arizona State's defense. It's hard to run an up-tempo offense when you're playing in a raucous, loud environment. But guess what? You get a couple quick scores early, 
and you quiet the crowd down, you can run at any tempo you want. And that's what Oregon's been able to do here tonight, playing a quote-unquote true road game. Y'all remember, Reese, y'all remember when Arizona State was up 7-0? See, what had happened was... Now Oregon inside the 45 will go ahead and go for it on fourth down. That's for a swing pass at the bottom of the screen. And Arizona State will timeout. use its final timeout Arizona of the first Arizona State. Half. That's their third and final charge timeout. This will Tonight. be a 30 second charge timeout. So with the 30 second timeout here, we have time to check in with Scott Van Pelt. Reese coming up on the Land Rover Halftime Report. Mark May, Brian Greasy standing by. We'll play Saturday Pick'em. Four games the guys will try to determine the, the winner of. We'll also take a look at the May Day Minute and Johnny Manziel against another team from LSU, but that Bayou Bengal D figures to be a little different than the boys from Ruston, Louisiana. Yeah, Scott, Johnny football ran wild, but Louisiana Tech very nearly Came all the way back down, 27-0, yeah. 34-7, and ended up losing that game by two, 59-57. Johnny Football committed to Oregon. You can Johnny. see him running this Chip, offense. Chip you? Kelly told us on the field before the game, he had Marcus Mariota and Johnny Football committed at the same time after their football game. On the fourth and five. Mariota over the middle. First down to Braylon Addison. Well. I know that I'm sure that Chip would have liked to have had Mariota and Johnny Manziel. I'm here to tell you, the one thing is a great Homer Smith used to say, the one thing you must know about quarterbacks, if they don't play, they transfer. transfer. Yeah. So there is no way that he would have kept them long. One of them would have been out of here. Yeah, and Manziel, I think his only other offer, his only Division I offer, big offer, was Oregon. And then Texas A&M offered him later. Mariota to the 30. And Manziel, obviously, He's been doing okay for yeah, himself. Yeah, I think it worked Kevin out for both guys. Well, I, you know, I, I think he got in a good offense, too. You know, I, I think it's so important that we talk about these quarterbacks all the time. The right offense makes a difference. Cam Newton plays in a different offense. He's a different guy. The Anthony Thomas stopped again. That's his 13th touch tonight. Jeez. Well, speaking of guys playing in the right offenses, Marcus Mariota's playing in the right offense here. And this offense is a little bit different than it's been in years past you know we're seeing more, we're gonna you're gonna see more zone read now in this offense we haven't seen it as much up until this game but you're seeing it a lot from Mariota tonight already uh, with nine carries in this game and if you're a defensive coordinator right now in the Pac-12 down the road if you're if you're a USC and you're Monty Kiffin or you're Oregon State or you're Cal yeah or you're Stanford what you're, you doing you're going Wow, let me, look, let me look at my board here. So I have to worry about Kenyon Barner, and I got to worry about DeAnthony Thomas, and who, now I got to worry about this redshirt freshman quarterback running the football. So many problems. Do you think Colorado's going, you know what? Just take the W. You don't want to suit up. That's going to be ugly. I, I agree with that part, but I do think we saw some fight last week. I don't think they'll just hand it to him. Uh, might be some fans that wish they would. And Mariota is going to be sacked. Davon Coleman has had a pretty productive first half considering the circumstances for Arizona State. Winding down toward half a minute. Oregon seeing if they can hang half a hundred before halftime. Well, and this is what they would do anyway in this situation. Not trying to, to rub the score in, but run it up. In these situations, out of field goal range, fourth down, that's what Chip Kelly does anyway. And, and, and it's the right move. Absolutely, because you guys mentioned later games where it might be more difficult. Mariota is still a redshirt freshman. Needs practice running a two-minute drill. Right. They're going to let it wind down this time. Five-yard penalty. Remains fourth down. Yeah, I mean, so just as we were talking about, I guess Chip changes his mind and decides well, to take it off the gas. It's almost half. I mean, that's... 43 is enough. Yeah. Yeah, Colt Lyerla hobbling around on the sideline. He's a difference maker, too. Yeah. That, that guy, this offense is hard enough, but once you throw in a guy that can play tight end, wide receiver, running back, you talk about your head swimming and defensive coordinators, the pace they play and then having so many guys that can do so many things, dude, it's impossible. So annoying. talking about Oregon last week with Todd Graham and he was saying of Lyra he believed that he gave them a physical presence both 
catching football from tight end H back type slot or from his running back position that maybe was a little bit different than they had had in recent years. Arizona State, as you see, Lyra headed toward the locker room. Probably anxious to the the be kept on the field. Get off the, they're anxious to get off the field, I'm sure. And you heard the official Michael Batlin say that the time of eight seconds will be kept on the field. Jackson Rice. Punt away for the Ducks. Fair catch called for by Jamal Miles. And there will be a second to go before halftime in the 43-7 Oregon lead. I understand. I thought there was only one second left on the game no, clock anyway. Yeah, what I said was eight seconds was what it should have been when they called the timeout. Gotcha. They kept it on the field. So still time for another snap. LSU and Texas A&M at noon Eastern time. Jeremy Hill, freshman running back, burst onto the scene with a huge game against South Carolina. He'll challenge that Aggie defense. We talked a lot about Johnny Manziel in the first half. He will be tested and be a challenge for the hat and the chief, John Chavis's defense. Michael Eubank in at quarterback for the Sun Devils for the final snap of the first half. And we'll see if Eubank, who's a guy that they're very high on for his future, will play the second half with the Sun Devils down 43 to 7. Samantha Steele with the Oregon head coach. All right, coach, give me a glimpse inside your world right now. When you're up 36 at halftime, what do you say in there? We, you know, we'll go in, we got some adjustments we got to make, and it's normal halftime, nothing changes for us. Our coaches get with them a little bit, we talk to them, and we'll come out here in the second half, still got 30 minutes of football to play. Well, then help me understand, what adjustments do you need to make? Everybody's got to make adjustments. No one plays perfect. We always, we lose the same rhythm, same routine all the time. No plan to ever take your foot off the gas? Yeah, we will do that. We always try to manage a game in the second half, so it depends on where we are in the score and all those other things. But we, we know how to play four minute offense, but it depends on when we're going to go to it. All right, I'll let you get in there. Thanks, Thanks coach. Chip Kelly's mantra, win the day. They've done that. We'll see how they win the second half. 43-7 at the break. Let's injure Scott Van Pelt, Mark May, and Brian Greasy. Land Rover Halftime Report. Welcome back to College Football Primetime on ESPN. Served by Applebee's. College football in high definition is presented by Vizio. About to kick off the second half here in Tempe, Sun Devil Stadium, Oregon, for 43 consecutive points. Cheerleaders have plenty to smile about. 43-7 as Arizona State will get it to start the second half. Sun Devils took advantage of a turnover on the second play of the game by the Ducks, scored on their first offensive snap since then. Ducks have been in control. As Rashad Ross, and he will be body slammed and short of the 20 yard line. Let's take a look at our coaching adjustments brought to you by the Home Depot. Arizona State got off to the best possible start it could have. Will Sutton forces a fumble on the very first play. The very next snap, Taylor Kelly finds Ozier for a touchdown pass, but Oregon quickly regrouped. They rip off a 71 yard touchdown run by Kenyon Barner against the defense that no longer was playing with their best defensive player in Will Sutton. They forced a couple turnovers. They're able to get the football back, create long drives, scored 43 unanswered. Taylor Kelly's first pass of the second half incomplete. Marcus Mariota had a solid first half. Staying loose on the bike, we assume. That's all he's doing, making sure the seat is adjusted. It's about the only thing that's going wrong tonight. Well, well you see the mascot push ups a little bit different for the Duck and for Sparky from Arizona State. He's going to need an IV and a protein shake. Impressive display for Oregon. DJ Foster stopped for about one. As Arizona State faces the third down early, and Samantha Steele's working the field. 
Yeah, I talked to Todd Graham and I asked him what happened. He said, well, we just panicked when Will Sutton went out and then made the mistakes we couldn't make, speaking of those turnovers. He did say that adversity reveals your character and his team has a lot of it. I asked him how you replace a guy like Will Sutton. His answer was very simple, we can't. Not at this stage, Sam, and it's one of the things that, Todd, we've had Arizona State last week and this week, and he always reiterates there are good players here. As Kelly scrambles on third down. He's going to be pushed out of bounds by Michael Clay, short of the first down. There just aren't a lot of them right now. They don't, they don't have a lot of depth. Sutton was their best player on defense, one of the best defensive linemen in the country, and he was hurt on the play in which he caused to fumble the second snap of the game. Well, there's not a lot of players like him regardless in the country, more or less. You know, Arizona State still rebuilding. They lost their entire team almost from a year ago. And uh, they don't have a lot of guys that can rotate in and out of front. And you could Oregon. Conversely, they have plenty of it. The teams that we talk about consistently, the dominant defenses across the country, they can shuffle in four, bring in the next four. And, and they, that takes time to build, to get a little depth. Josh Hugner. This one rolling right around the Oregon 30-yard line. That's where the Ducks will have it for the first time in the second half. And we spent a lot of time in the pregame talking about Sutton. Here's the play on which he was hurt. He knocked the ball loose from Mariota and hurt a knee and out of his pads and on crutches. It's a weird play because such, I mean, such a big leg and then you run into a little leg like Mariota and, it, and, it, and he's okay. And so you think that initially it wasn't that bad and you hope it was just a bone bruise, you know, knee to knee. But obviously not being able to put any weight on it. Brian Bennett starting the second half at quarterback for Oregon. The Anthony Thomas has the first carry, what? short gain on first down. Here's Brian. Bennett. He's yeah. a sophomore from Encino, California. Was in the middle of the quarterback derby with Mariota in the preseason and and finished second to and, the talented and, freshman. And guess what? There's not a lot of drop off in talent after Marcus Mariota with Brian Bennett in the game. I mean, they were neck and neck all off season. Played tremendously in a couple games in place of Darren Thomas last year. He can pitch it. He can tote the rock as well. Barner he stopped a yeah. yard or two short of the first down. All oh, the pitching and catching is good, but when you can hand it off to two, four, <laughs> six, you're like, yeah, get some of that. And this is where we have seen Oregon, not that they won't run their offense, not that they won't look for the big plays. Seen them build the big leads in the first half a few times this season. And let it roll down. Deep. 63 offense, five yard penalty, remains third down. It'll be third down and seven. An opportunity now certainly for Chip Kelly to substitute a lot of different players on offense, which he does already anyway, but get guys repetition, quality reps now in the second half, lots of football to go. He rotates nine different offensive linemen in the game anyway. So and that's crazy. Most <laughs> most teams want to stick with the continuity of their five up front. They don't want to rotate. Bennett firing it well out of bounds. He's looking for Eric Dungy, Tony Dungy's son. Fires it a little too far, and the Ducks will have to punt. There is Eric. A lot more hair than his daddy, huh? <laughs> yeah, just a bit. Overcompensation, perhaps. 6'1", <laughs> 183 sophomore from Tampa. Caught five balls this year. Did have a touchdown catch last season. Jackson Rice to punt for the Ducks. Jamal Miles. Splits a couple of defenders and is knocked down at the 35. And Arizona State will have it for the second time in the second half. Trying to finish on a high note, build a little confidence down 43 7. MP is Marcus Mariota appears that his night is finished, putting 43 up in the first half against Arizona State. The Sun Devils fighting for a little pride as Marion Grice gets a short gain on first down. You know. Grice had the huge game that we saw last week against Colorado. A dangerous guy. Todd Graham, Mike Novell's offense. Bryce has a first down, running hard across the 45 up close to midfield. We saw the screen game last week. Absolutely killed Colorado. I hadn't seen Arizona State dial up in his screens yet. 
<laughs> haven't had a lot of time. Yeah. They really haven't something. been in position. I mean, they've done a bad job winning on first downs. Put themselves in too many third and long situations, and Oregon's been able to pin their ears back. Back to Grice. They'll get it into Ducks territory. And to lend a little perspective to this for Arizona State, they were off to a better start than many imagined they would be in Todd Graham's first year. And Graham was pretty honest about it. He said, we've won five games against teams that we should have beaten. He felt like they probably should have beaten Missouri as well, but they lost on the road. Young quarterback, his first start in a difficult environment. And that's the only game they've lost until tonight. Still a good start in the Todd Graham era so far. Michael Clay is there to knock down Rashad Ross. Clay coming back from a leg injury he suffered against UW. And Graham, Graham, five and one this year, and you see the influence that he's had on Arizona State, particularly defense, discipline, and penalties. And Todd came in with a lot of heat his way because of some short tenures a couple of places. Most recently, just one year at Pittsburgh, an acrimonious departure from the Steel City. Only saved one year at Rice, his first head coaching job before going to Tulsa, where he had his most success with three 10-win seasons. Kelly can't find anybody in a black shirt to throw the ball to. Paseco Lacumbo just knocks him out of bounds. It'll be fourth down. Well, Todd Graham told us yesterday that this was the biggest game in his 27-year coaching career. This game trumped the win against Notre Dame back in 2010 when he was a coach at Tulsa. We just heard Sam talk about learning about yourself when you go through adversity. They may lose this game tonight, but they got to be able to pick themselves back up and get ready for a good UCLA team next on the schedule because they're still in a tie for first place in the Pac-12 South if they lose. Well, that's what I'm wondering. Are they any good? I mean, that's an honest question. They beat the teams they were supposed to. They lost to a bad Missouri team. Their schedule's coming up. Remember, this team last year at Arizona State, they started off hot and then folded down the stretch. So... Still got a lot to learn about Arizona. I still got a lot to learn about Arizona State. Well, Taylor Kelly puts the punt inside the 10. David, I agree with you. The one thing, the one thing I would say is that the first step to being a good team is beating the teams you're supposed to beat. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. There, that's the first step. No, absolutely. And last year under Dennis Erickson, they got off to a great start, and then things absolutely fell apart. And but they're coming into the meat of their schedule too yeah. right Oof, now. Right. When you consider tonight, Oregon, then UCLA at home, then at Oregon State then at USC. So if you don't get your mind right and get over this loss, Quickly. if they lose, then, uh, then, then, then this thing could be a free fall. If? Just, just saying. I, I, saying there's a chance. I don't even think Lloyd Christmas would believe there's uh -uh. a chance. Second and long. Now here is the schedule, which Jesse alluded. UCLA also with a first-year coach of Jim Moore, and they've been off to a great start. Jonathan Franklin, a terrific running back and if will sutton is out for an extended period of time that certainly hurts the sun devils in terms of being able to stop the run. so isn't it fair to judge them over their next five games yeah they could lose four out of five but if they win you know three or four of those obviously i think it'd be a huge win and a huge step in the right direction when you do win early though one thing good about todd graham and, and a new coach at least you start to buy in and you start to have confidence you start to build that now this is something that you got to be able to respond to and bounce back from. But they they sound like, they've talked like they've bought in and they've done what they've needed to do so far early in the season. Well, you know, let's not forget, too, this is a team that was picked to finish fifth yeah. in the Pac-12 South. Yeah. False start. Offense, number 64. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Conversely, guys, the most impressive thing to me about Chip Kelly's teams is the consistency. And they don't overvalue teams that are ranked. They don't undervalue games against inferior competition, whether they're playing Tennessee Tech or a 5-1 and Arizona State team. They come out and they play the same way week in, week out. Byron Marshall back to the line of scrimmage. You know, I asked Chip about that when we talked to him this week because he talks about the faceless opponents. Yeah. He doesn't buy into the concept of rivalry games, as you see the three previous seasons in which he's been the head coach. That, I think that is the perfect way to approach it mentally from a philosophical standpoint. In reality, it's, it's difficult for young people to approach every game the same way, is it not? 100%. 
Brian Bennett's loose, picking up another first down. But 18 year old, 19 year old, 20 year old kids naturally peek ahead at the schedule sometimes and go, USC's pretty good. Or, hey, we just scored 60 points. We're pretty good. Yeah, so I, I think that both ways, once you get the pats on the back and once you look ahead sometimes. But he does, he seems like, I, I love Chip Kelly because every time you talk to him, he's a why guy. Like, he wants to know, you tell him he can't do something, well, why can't we do it? You know, like, you tell me I can't do this, why? And he's just, he's always testing the limits and he's always evolving and, and getting better and, and finding new ways to become effective. And that's, that's what really makes him a great coach, in my opinion. That was one of the things he, he said in response about how they get kids to approach the game that way, everything being the same. They constantly push the margins. Yeah. They don't allow them to have a bad day. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't, they, they don't allow them to go up and down. False start. 64. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Main second down. And Tyler Johnstone, who's a freshman from Chandler, Arizona, has a couple of false starts in this drive, and he's going to have a seat and be replaced by Kyle Long. He's Howie's son, who started his career as a college athlete as a baseball player at Florida State before realizing he was 6'7", 300 pounds. <laughs> another, play left tackle. Another example of all that depth he's got. The Anthony Thomas short game. But going back to your point, Reese, Chip Kelly pushes the margins. He sets the bar so high. He's brainwashed this team into the faceless opponent, winning the day. Every game is a rivalry game, and that's why they've won three straight Pac-12 titles. That's why after tonight, they're 29-2 and two in conference games under Chip Kelly. That's why after tonight, they've won 12 games on the road, the longest streak in the FBS. It's the mentality and the mindset. This team has bought in to Chip Kelly's message, and the consistency is just remarkable. I think it has a lot to do with the system, too. Pretty good players as well. <laughs> That was almost the rarest sight. Oregon getting a delayed game penalty, and Bennett is sacked by Brandon McGee. McGee is a senior and a leader on this defense, missed last year with an Achilles injury. He, too, like Long, that we mentioned a minute ago, a baseball player drafted by the Red Sox, might pursue a baseball career when his football days at Arizona State's done. That remains to be seen. Jackson Rice to punt it away. Maul Miles catches it right on Sparky's nose at the 25. Lost about three on the return. And Arizona State will have it back. The Duck occupying himself with Solid. a big lead. Wrangler. Nothing beats Wrangler comfort. Wrangler. Real. Comfortable jeans. Uh, DeAnthony Thomas was a high school legend in Los Angeles area, and as a 12-year-old, he played for the Crenshaw Bears in the Snoop Youth Football League. Coach Snoop with the Chino Hills Pop Warner football team. It, it used to be Snoop Dogg. Now it's Snoop Lion, uh -huh. I think. And if DeAnthony keeps going off, he hasn't tonight, but as he has in the season, maybe someday it'll be Snoop Duck. What about Snoop Mamba? Could be. He gave DeAnthony Thomas the nickname the Black Mamba, although there is some dispute in Los Angeles as Taylor Kelly's knocked down as to who was the Black Mamba first, Dat or Kobe. <laughs> DeAnthony hasn't really gotten loose tonight, but he was the co-freshman of the year in the Pac-12 last year with Marquise Lee from USC. He scored nine touchdowns this season. Arizona State's done a nice job against him tonight and the other guys that have eaten him up. And in the process, Taylor Kelly almost gets eaten up. He gets away once. He can't get away a second time from Taylor Hart. Well, that's, that's your favorite kind of sack right there as a D-lineman, baby. <laughs> that's what you call game's over. Your boy grabs him. He stays up. Big defensive lineman. He does stay up, by the way. Big defensive lineman, Hart. Clean up. Watch this. Clean it up. Guess what that counts as in the stat column? Are you, a sack. Are you celebrating that, though? No, no, you can't Okay, okay, that. okay. I mean, later on, you're like, yeah, that's one more, that's one more in the column, but. Third and five. Taylor Kelly. It's Chris Coyle. Looks as if he'll have enough of the first down, as he does. And Sam, 
I know you spent a little time with DeAnthony talking about those early days around Snoop. Yeah, I would like to confirm that he did say he was Black Mamba before Kobe Bryant. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a Suns fan and maybe a Laker hater. I'm saying that because it's true. Now, I expected DeAnthony to be a cocky guy. Everybody talks about him being the fastest guy in the country. So I tried to bait him into saying that. No, he wasn't having it. Very humble, especially now that he's getting all this attention. He said he may or may not be the fastest, but the guy he wants to race just in the 40, straight up, Tavon Austin. He said that's the guy that he wants to see so he can really know if he's the fastest guy. The other thing I thought was funny that he said was that he's been overwhelmed by how much attention he's been getting. I mentioned he was a shy guy. He said some of these classes, he said there are these old women that come up to me and ask me for my autograph and I don't know what to do. I'm like, well, I, I don't know what I would do in <laughs> if old women are coming up to you in class. I don't know what you do. Sign it. Yeah. It's pretty <laughs> I mean, respect your elders. That's what I try to tell you three all the time. <laughs> Guys, you it, know, is, it is a lot to handle, though. I mean, once you start, when you once you start getting attention, I think it can go, it can get to your head. As a player, there's definitely times when people tell you you're great all the time, and and then just like you know, the last three of the last four games, he hasn't had great games, and then you start to get down on yourself, and I mean, it, it's real. Your, your psyche's not, you're not a man yet. You're still learning and, and growing. So I think you still keep an eye on him, but the, the attention is something that's real. Third down and seven for Kelly. Being chased by Ricky Hamuli. And Taylor will lose a couple. And it'll be fourth down. Three and a half to go. It's been status quo since halftime. Frustrating night for Arizona State. And Oregon right now just marching its way toward its seventh victory of the season. 4-0 in the Pac-12 at the end of this game. That will leave the only two teams unbeaten in conference play in the Pac-12 in the great state of Oregon. Hubner unleashes a beauty. He also knocked it out of bounds. What a tremendous punt by the Sun Devils senior from Scottsdale. He'll mark it out of bounds on about the nine yard line. A 57 yard punt from Hubner. Three oh six remaining in the third quarter. Oregon comfortably on top. Reese Davis, Jesse Palmer, David Pollock, Samantha Steele. Glad to have you with us Thursday night in the Pac-12. Saturday night, prime time on ESPN, the number one team in the country. Alabama against one of their arch rivals, the Tennessee Volunteers. Crimson Tide defense leading the nation in scoring and total defense and yards per play when the game's close. Against a Tennessee team that can be Explosive on offense. Byron Marshall, another carry. Short gain on first down for the Ducks. Crimson Tide leading the BCS standings at number one, just ahead of fellow SEC member Florida. The Ducks, somewhat surprisingly to some, with the initial BCS standings, opening in third. Barner is back. Brian Bennett taking a shot deep down the field. He misses Josh Huff, third and nine coming. I think a lot of people look at the BCS, you look atop the BCS, you look at remaining games for three, four, and five, and a big question, you know, we talked a little bit about this earlier. If these three teams were to win out the rest of the way, go undefeated, and of course, assuming that there's, a, there's one undefeated team, of course, there will be at the end of the year for the SEC. Which of these teams has the best chance to make but it into the BCS mean, National Championship? You mean no more than one team from the SEC? Right, yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Timeout. Arizona State. That's their first charge timeout. Well, the Sun Devils use a timeout here on third and nine. Trying to see if they can get off the field. And, and, and to your point, Jesse, is something we've talked about. We talked about it on BCS Countdown a little bit. It becomes a dilemma. I, I know what happened last year, but it seems as if the SEC thing will, will play itself yes. out with everybody playing each other. That would leave another spot. And if you do have an undefeated team from the Pac-12, Oregon, Kansas State, and Notre Dame all undefeated, how do you stack that up? I think it's Oregon. 
when you compare their resumes at the end of the year, I think because of their schedule, and we've looked at it a couple times tonight, who they got yeah. to play in the month of November. Just remember, too, if Oregon were to win out, that weakens Notre Dame's schedule as well because Stanford would have lost again and USC will have lost. You think anybody looks across the country, though, at Notre Dame's schedule and says they should have a chance to be there? I, I, think it's a, I think it's a fair argument, David, because before the season, we looked at... Now, look, Michigan hasn't been what we anticipated. Michigan State certainly hasn't been what we anticipated. You see what Notre Dame has left. Oklahoma had the early loss of Kansas State. But before the season, we said the Irish have this overwhelming schedule, no way they can run the table against yeah. it. But in theory, they could have beaten if Michigan were to win the Big Ten, Big Ten champion, Big 12 champion, maybe, maybe Pac-12 yeah. champion if USC were to win the league. Yeah, and you talk about But Oregon. if they do that, then Oregon's not undefeated. Right. Though yeah. Oregon State could be, I guess. Well, and, and you talk about Oregon State, or you talk about Oregon beating USC, and but so too would have Notre Dame if they're talking about Notre Dame running the table. So, you know, both those guys, that means would, would lessen that being as effective because that would knock them probably out of the rankings if both teams beat them. But, I mean, at Oklahoma for Notre Dame, at USC, two tough road challenges. I mean, you could... You could probably stack those up against anybody, especially uh, the Ducks. You could probably stack it up. I'm not saying they are, and I would say Oregon is. But the body of work would be pretty impressive for Notre Dame. Big game this weekend, Kansas State mm -hmm. at West yeah. Virginia. I think Kansas State has a chance to impress a lot of voters in that game. It's about time. We need some more bandwagon jumpers on K-State and Oregon State. Because this is what I'm saying. That's what, or, Come on now. When everybody, room. when everybody talks about Kansas State, if you haven't watched them play, everyone's going to say, Optimus Klein. Right. Everyone's going to talk Finish about for Colin you, Klein at quarterback. But they play defense, too. And Arthur yeah. Brown and Meshack Williams, they got guys. And if they could go out against West Virginia on the road, if they could shut that offense down like Texas Tech did this past week or something similar, I think all of a sudden in voters' minds they'd realize that was a much more balanced team. And they went to Oklahoma already. They've already done yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, don't forget that now. Uh, I, think, I think you could easily make the argument that Kansas State has the most impressive single win of anybody this year. Uh, Oklahoma? I mean, winning at Oklahoma? Yeah. Is that? Nobody's beaten Bob Stoops at home. Or ranked I, mean, in, I mean, period. Florida being LSU at home is, is impressive. Yeah, and he's That's true, but it was on home. the road. Yeah. He on the road. Well, we don't know. I mean, we also still don't know, you know, necessarily how good Oklahoma's offense is either, right? Sort of looking no. better against Iowa State. Hard to evaluate them against Texas. Well, so every, Texas everybody looks good defense. against Texas. If you're a running back and you go against Texas, be prepared to be an All-American. <laughs> Uh, let me let me hit you with what the Oklahoma fan Oklahoma fans would say right now. Look at what the Sooners did against Texas Tech, mm -hmm. and what West Virginia did against Texas Tech. Mm -hmm. Same place, both yeah. in Lubbock. Sooners cut them up. Marion Price out of the backfield. One reason I like Oklahoma, they play great defense. And everyone talks about them and Landry Jones and and the weapons right now. They're playing unbelievable up front. With R.J. Washington. Shoot, back in yeah, playing good, too. They're, they're, they're playing good everywhere. They got David King. They got Colvin. They got Jefferson. So many guys making plays. Defensive coordinator Mike Stoops has done a great job with that unit. Everybody that jumped off the Mike or the uh, Manny Diaz bandwagon, rightfully so this year, mm -hmm. has be jumping on the Mike Stoops bandwagon because he's been, he's been phenomenal. And Mike Stoops, after his run ended, it's down the road a couple hours at the University of Arizona, reunited with his brother, and has transformed that Oklahoma defense back to what it was when Mike was defensive coordinator there before. One more quarter in Tempe. Ducks up big. You can see games on the ESPN platforms. You can see Replays of games must have on your computer or on your iPad or your mobile device. Fourth quarter getting underway here in Tempe, 43-7. Oregon with a comfortable lead. Taylor Kelly to Chris Coyle. And the Sun Devils threatening to get a second touchdown. Their first snap of the night took them into the end zone after an Oregon turnover, and they haven't been back. Trust me, Oregon defensive coordinator Nick Aliotti not pleased about what is going on on this drive. Even though they're way up, they've only given up seven points. They play a lot of guys. He's evaluating his backups, his third stringers. He expects them to play at the same level. Kelly. 
and just runs it out of bounds. I, I saw Nick at halftime. He's up 43 to seven, <laughs> and and he looked he looked like somebody just punched him in the gut. And I said, Hey, Nick, great job in the first half. He goes, gave up a touchdown in the first play. We just weren't ready to go. <laughs> just demanding excellence for him. The guy who's done such a spectacular job as defensive coordinator at Oregon, Cameron Marshall, plunging for a couple, stopped at about the two, third and goal coming. And I think Todd Graham right now has to be happy with the effort that, that his team's putting into this because his offense is still fighting against Nick Aliotti's defense. And, this Arizona State defense here recently in, in recent possessions has not allowed any points. They're getting Oregon off the field. So guys are fighting. I mean, Oregon's taking all their guys out, too. Yeah. And, and Marshall is stuffed. Fourth and goal coming. Taylor Hart, the one of the starters, off. is back in there. I mean, the foot's not on the gas anymore. This is, yeah, they pulled the, uh... We still, I mean, they're still playing with guys that normally play in close games anyway. They're just now playing all the snaps. Yeah. Not as much high octane football either. Anyway, down you see Hart, Jordan, still on the oh, field yeah. on the I'm defensive still line. Got some guys out there. But this is still hard because it's. I mean, you lost your intensity, and I know it's just it's really tough because you don't expect to play a lot in the second half, and it's not an excuse, but it's just. But I, think, I think for pride. I mean, they hear a lot of people say, "Hey, this is the best Oregon defense in the Chip Kelly era." I mean, yeah. they should be out there trying to prove it. Big oh. down right here. Arizona State trying to salvage a little offensive pride. Taylor Kelly in a lot of trouble, and Oregon's going to get a stop on the goal line. Ricky Hamuli making the tackle, and it'll be a turnover on downs for the Sun Devils. One of the reasons I think this is one of the best defenses in the country, they're incredible at getting turnovers, and they give the football back to their offense. They get off the field on third down, they get off the field on fourth down. Look at Coach Aliotti. There you go, clapping the hands. That's what I'm talking about. No more points on the board. But, guys, because this defense gets off the field so often and gets turnovers, this offense is averaging 84 plays a game. That's the most offensive snaps per game under Chip Kelly since he's been here at Oregon. So it's a perfect marriage. It just it makes the monster that much more dangerous. Well, a lot of times I think the best teams, Nick Saban, builds his offense around his defense. He doesn't want an offense that's going to pitch it around the yard, do a lot, a lot of high risk. It's going to be ball control, defense. A punt's not the worst thing in the world. You know, I, this defense is attack, 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 cause chaos, create turnovers. But you know what? There's so much more sound. There's so much more physical up front than they've been in the past. They're fast as all get out on defense. And with the depth, they're able to rotate and stay fresh and I, it's, it's a great D, man. I, I wouldn't sleep on them, all the guys across the country. I, I really think that everything Oregon does systematically really marries so well to each other. And we talk about the tempo on offense for Oregon. Bennett firing it down the middle, incomplete. He's trying to get it to Pharaoh Brown. Right in the hands. The, the tempo works because the offense is simplified, right? They yeah. really only have three main running plays. So yeah. you, you take a lot of the thinking out for the offensive linemen. They have depth. They rotate in nine yep. linemen, six receivers. Guys can get it done. And you give a, you get a defense that gives you the ball back every three snaps. It's pretty solid. So, I mean, it's the perfect combination of offense and defense to work together. And that's, what, that's a big reason why they're so difficult to beat. Richard Smith, the freshman, back to return the punt for Arizona State. He'll take it just across the 50, and he stopped almost immediately. 43-7. I guess the duck has Bieber fever. <laughs> up on Arizona State 43-7 as we continue Dr. Pepper's road to the championship. Michael Eubank in a quarterback completes his first pass of the night to Alonzo Owunu. Eubank was one of three guys competing for the starting quarterback job. They're very high on his future. Big guy. 
6'6", 233 pounds. Beaten out by Taylor Kelly, but Todd Graham still high on his potential and his ability, and he fires a strike down the middle to D.J. Foster. Foster carries the ball into the red zone, and Arizona State trying to get another one on the board. These are important repetitions for him right now. The game is out of hand, but as a coaching staff, you're, chill, you're still developing and still evaluating all players on the field. Michael Eubank, a guy that's going to see more snaps as the season goes on. Eubank. Pushes ahead to the 10, Sam Camp, a freshman from nearby Mesa, Arizona, makes the tackle for the Ducks. Well, his nickname's Baby Cam. Davey loves that Stop nickname it. for him because he's <laughs> six foot six, 233 pounds. Big guy, Stop can it. run. <laughs> I, I can't do that. You, you can't do the Baby Cam. I don't, I don't care if, first of all, nobody is built like that, runs like that, and throws like that. If he was, okay, here's a question. If he was, 60% of camp, 70% of camp. Would he be starting? Well, let me ask you this. Okay. Did Cam Newton start as a freshman at Florida? No. That's the age that Michael Eubank is. No. Yeah, well, took him until his, what, fourth year in college after he that's true. left Florida and went to Blaine Junior College. Give him a little time. But Good I do time. agree with you Have in principle. Okay, thank I, you. I agree with you in principle. I'm just David. telling you. So impatient up here. No, I'm just telling you. You watch this guy run the ball, and you watch Cam Newton run the ball. It's just it's a smidge different. Okay. No, look, he Cam Newton is a freak of nature. Had perhaps the greatest single season of any quarterback. <laughs> Certainly oh, in, yeah. in the modern era of college football, maybe all time. I, I mean, a brilliant were, season. If you were telling me I had one guy to build my offense around for one season in the history of college football. I'm taking but, Cam Newton. But, but Dave, that's why they call him Baby Cam. Yeah. Because he's not, he's not, just call he's, him he's, baby. Not, he's not grown man Cam. Just call him he's Baby. Just, he's freshman Cam. Well, let's see if he can get eight yards and keep this drive alive. He cannot. Instead, the ball is intercepted. And knocked out of bounds is Eric Dargan. And twice now, Arizona State's had the ball in the red zone, and twice the Oregon defense has turned them away. As Eubank throws an interception off the deflection. 43-7, Ducks firmly in control. Batted into the air, and Dargan was there to take it away for Oregon. There's two for $20 menu all season long. See you tomorrow. And in part by Nissan. Premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Troy Hill batted the ball into the air and little Ginger making his way to the sideline was picked off by Eric Dargan. Aaron Marshall with the ball for the Ducks and the Ducks have a, an offensive lineman down. I believe that's Nick Cody, number 61. He's, he's wearing a brace on that right knee, but he's holding it. Mm. Cody's a senior. And Chip Kelly said that you know, he's a tough guy, perhaps a little bit limited athletically, but always seems to find a way. The guy who's really transformed himself by studying opposing defense is one of the smart guys on that line. We'll check on his condition when you come back to Tempe. Baylor, Texas. Continue Dr. Pepper's road to the championship. Oregon going to remain undefeated in 10 minutes, 54 seconds, up 43 to 7. That's Nick Cody, the offensive lineman, starting right guard for the Ducks, who was holding his right knee on the previous play. But the good news is Nick walked himself off the field and does not appear at the moment that he's being attended to. So hopefully that's good news for the Oregon offensive line. Brian Bennett in a quarterback. He's played the second half after Marcus Mariota and friends put 43 on the board in the first half. Bennett with a long pitch out. That was Dwayne Stanford, the freshman, catching the pitch, moving the chains. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series goes to Kansas. Coverage starts for ESPN Sunday, 1 o'clock Eastern time. With the NASCAR Sprint Cup countdown, the chase for the cup has reached its midway point. Five of the eight previous chases, the leader at the halfway point went on to win the title. Greg Keselowski 
hopes that that trend continues. He is your points leader. Bennett buying a little time, firing him, looking for Blake Stanton. Chip Kelly still coaching hard out there. He had a couple of select words for his quarterback, Brian Bennett. Select words, huh? Yeah. Salty language, even. Uh, I, I don't know if it was it was if it was anything that you know you, you wouldn't tell your children, but it just was certainly at a. At a oh, sharp I got children, oh. dog. What are you talking it about? Was sharp. <laughs> it been a little. It was certainly. Uh, I ain't saying that to my kids. David, time I've spent around you, you rarely use any salty language anyway. No. You feel you sort of have your own vernacular a yeah. little bit, but. But you love that with Chip Kelly. Still coaching his guys hard. 43-7, 10 minutes to go in the fourth. A lot of backups in the game. You know, you're not playing as fast a tempo, but you don't take your foot off the gas when it comes to coaching and teaching. And, and, you, know, and you know what it does, too, Jesse, and you, you guys know this better than anyone. It shows these guys, and a lot of these guys play a lot anyway because Oregon plays a lot of people. It shows them you're interested in how they perform, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, yeah. Not just interested in the starters and the results of the game. As Bennett fired and it's intercepted. Anthony Jones has a chance to put it in the house, and he does for the Sun Devils. A little something to cheer about for the remaining Arizona State fans here. The pick six. Well, Chip's probably not too happy for that one. He's probably got some salty language waiting for Mr. Bennett on the sidelines. Yeah. Well, just because you're up by a lot of points, as a quarterback particularly, doesn't mean it's okay to start being careless with the football and start taking risks because you don't think it matters anymore. It still matters. You're expected to play the way you're coached regardless of what the score is, regardless of who's in the game with you. Again, you are always being evaluated. Both coaching staffs evaluating all of their players, even though the score is very different. Well, 43 to 14. Arizona State scores for the first time since their first offensive snap tonight. See here, Bennett just got in a little bit of trouble in the pocket. Didn't have great bounce when he made that throw, trying to force it over the middle of the field into way too much traffic. And Anthony Jones, backup linebacker, makes him pay. So for Todd Grant, another sign that your team is still fighting. Guys are showing great effort, playing all the way through. <laughs> I've been there before. <laughs> Get off the phone. Probably wasn't great language on the other side of that phone call either. But, you know, to your point, you mentioned earlier, Reese, and this is true, Dave, because you know this also. The worst day for you as a player is when you start, when you make a mistake and you don't get yelled at because that means the coaches gave up on you and they don't care anymore. Chip Kelly cares about his guys. He wants to see Brian Bennett and these backup players get better, so he's going to coach them. And Bennett, at this stage in his career, is a far more dangerous runner than passer, and it was probably one of the differences between he and Mariota in the quarterback competition. And the Ducks will down it in the end zone. Marshall, what? hey, Byron Marshall wanted to run that thing out. He'll take it on the 25 instead. A comparison between Florida and Oregon, many people expected that the Ducks would be second in the initial release of the BCS standings. Comparison of what the two teams have done over the course of this season. Nobody that Oregon has beaten is currently ranked. Arizona and Washington were ranked at the time. Florida, better resume, therefore the computers liked them better. Oregon right now ranked sixth in the computers, and that's why they they finished in, or didn't finish, but started in third with the initial BCS standings. There's no debating the resume. I mean, no. no. Everybody is gonna sit there and look at that and say Florida has done more. They've beaten better teams, hands down, easily. Their three best wins are better than any of Oregon's wins total. I mean, if you look at their schedule, but we also look at the eyeball test and we look at how the team looks. This offense obviously can score a lot of points. Florida's offense, I don't know that they can score a lot of points. All right, some some fans, David, hate that. They no. hate hearing the eyeball test. Sorry. And no, I'm not saying it's wrong. I actually, I mean, that's part of the deal because the voters, there is a subjective quality in the formula. So, so when you Take a look at the key remaining games for the Ducks here and for the Gators. What is it that, is it just offense? And some would argue then that Florida's facing different types of defenses, and that's why their offense doesn't, doesn't look as good. I just think Oregon is a more balanced team top to bottom. When I look at it from the eyeball test, and I understand that the resume for Florida right now is much better. Guys, I don't know how good Texas A&M is yet. 
and I know Florida beat them on the road, and that was impressive. It's impressive today. We'll find out how good how good AM is this week when they play LSU. Both teams, very tough games to go. Both teams potentially also have a conference championship game against another ranked opponent. So it'll work itself out, but I'm with you, Davey. In terms of the eyeball test, it has less to do with dominating and more to do with just being more balanced. Offense, defense, special teams. And I will say this. I, I think that Florida's defensive line is so good and so deep, they could give Oregon problems, no doubt about it, if you start talking head-to-head. -head. But well, listen, I know you, it's early. Yeah, Calm period. the heck down. Yeah. Yeah. These teams are going to square off. We're going to learn more about Florida as they go along. We're going to learn more about Oregon. But what you've seen so far from Oregon, they haven't messed around with anybody either. Right. It's one thing when you have a bad schedule and you go, oh, they kind of play Tennessee Tech. Well, look, kind of look what happened Arizona to LSU and Auburn. Or, I mean, 12 to 10. I mean, a lot of people were giving them, and then Towson. LSU, I mean, Towson. You know, yeah, I mean, so that, that, to my point earlier, Oregon is so consistent. No matter who they play against, mm. they bring their A game to the ballpark. You know what's going to happen. They're going to yeah. score a lot of points. Defense is going to create turnovers. They, they, play, they bring their A game. Michael Eubank returning. Pass is low for Coyle. It'll be second down and 10. And I, you know, I know you guys, I've said this to you a hundred times already. I know you're getting tired of hearing it. I just don't think it's a big deal that the two SEC teams are ranked ahead of Oregon yeah, right yeah. now. The, the more yeah. pressing issue is will they stay ahead exactly. of Kansas State or Notre Dame yep. if they were to, if those two teams or one of those two teams were to finish undefeated. Jeff for Emol. Every man of Wildcats, what Emol stands for. The, Battle cry in some cases for Kansas State. So what do you think? We've seen teams be the flavor of the moment as West Virginia was. Yep. And they got humbled when they went to Lubbock. Now they have a chance to atone against Kansas State. It's gonna be there's gonna be even more urgency on the Mountaineers part to prove that their start wasn't a fluke against K-State Saturday. That's a that's a tough order of business for the Wildcats. I, I, I want to see them stop somebody. I mean, how many points does K-State get this weekend? I, you know, the thing I would say, Jesse, they've been decent against the run. I think West Virginia, I mean, the question is, are they decent against the run because it's so easy to throw against them in the teams they've played against, or are they capable of stopping a running team? Yeah, I, I think it's 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 just bad, bad defense. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think they're capable of stopping all the, all the way around. I mean, my high school team might be able to put 30 up on them. Ooh. A Canadian high school team? Well, we, we, we have a bigger field. Okay. Underneath the coil. Did y'all play with more or less players in the field? Good more. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we would not be able to stop Geno Smith. I'll tell you that no. right now. I'll be interested to see, too, watching Geno Smith and Austin and Bailey. If you kind of got a little bit of a blueprint from, from Texas Tech, I, I want to see if you can replicate that. Because I, I think Geno played his worst game, left a lot of plays on the field, a lot of things open. That I'd, I'd like to see him check it down a little bit more, maybe not throw it as much, maybe run a little bit. He'll still have opportunities to put up a lot of points. And that's the thing. I also think West Virginia is a team that can beat anybody they play mm -hmm. because they got so much firepower. So Kansas State, it'll be a big test. You know, on the flight out here, I went back and watched Texas Tech defensively against West Virginia and what they did. They did a very good job mixing up their looks. They double covered Tavon Austin at times. They double covered Stebbin Bailey at times. Ironically, played a lot of press man-to-man -man coverage as well, challenged them. One thing that was, uh, I think, very common across the board, they got pressure on Geno Smith. Yep. They did it with three. They did it with five-plus. A lot of different uh, looks were mixed up. Uh, Texas Tech's defense did not give any explosive plays up. They allowed one play of 20 or more yards. They forced West Virginia to drive the field. Marion Grice picks up the first down for Arizona State and a pass from Michael Eubank. And last year, I know some of the personnel was different for Kansas State, but the Wildcats beat Robert Griffin III and Baylor, had some success, forced some turnovers. I know the offense is a little bit different, but it's not as if, you know, they're unaccustomed to seeing quick-paced, high-powered offenses in the Big 12. Eubank to Coyle. They'll strain ahead and pick up another first down. You know, K-State, speaking of them, they still got their work cut out for them, too. Not just this game at West Virginia. They're going to play Texas Tech, yep. who's explosive on offense, but also, as they've proven, can stop good, de uh, good offenses. I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there. You can't stop Optimus Klein. And then Oklahoma State. Get a clue. And now. then at TCU. I mean, you know, K-State still got a road ahead to go. Eubank pull it down and pick up. Two, maybe three. And also, remember last year after Texas Tech pulled off its signature victory against Oklahoma, 
they turned in their pads and helmets and really didn't show up to play anymore. Gave up approximately 5 billion points. Didn't 5 billion? Win again. Approximately. I like yeah. that. They got drilled. I mean, they... they big, they, big game Tubbs gets them up for the big game. Oy. Well, he's beaten six top five opponents. Yeah. I think this is a little different team that uh, Coach Tubbs has down in Lubbock this year. I don't think you'll see the same type I of like face plant after the big win as you did last year. Eubank. Shoved out of bounds. The 25 by Tyson Coleman. The thing I like about Texas Tech, I like how Seth Degg, I think he showed a lot about his demeanor and, and, and his pride. I mean, he threw three interceptions against Oklahoma a couple yeah. weeks ago. He bounces back and has a career day, throwing for almost 500 yards and six touchdowns against West Virginia. And they got a guy that can sling the rock now. Yeah. I always just look at also West Virginia, another, if you want to make it be a Heisman candidate, play against that defense. But, no, he's, he's overcome a lot, a couple knee surgeries in high school. The only offer that stuck with him was Texas Tech, and he can definitely sling it. Eubank inaccurate. He had Foster who likely would have had the first down. It'll be fourth down. Todd Graham's going to obviously leave the offense on the field as we've got inside five minutes to go in Arizona State trying to put a little window dressing on the score. Also finish with something to build on. Disappointing night for Taylor Kelly. Starting quarterback for Arizona State. He's had a terrific start. Eubank has taken over late in this game. Out of the backfield, Foster. First down and more. Foster still on his feet. Gets one more block. Foster headed for the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona State. Young players gaining confidence late in a game that would appear meaningless right now because of what they're down. But you got a young freshman quarterback in Michael Eubank, a true freshman running back in DJ Foster, who's really been their biggest playmaker on offense all year long. And wide receivers and linemen downfield showing great effort on blocks to help DJ Foster get into the end zone. So 43 to 21, Oregon still comfortable with a 22 point edge on Arizona State. DJ Foster who leads his team in explosive plays has another hit the Devils on the board. Forty-three twenty-one. Oregon firmly in control. Ducks haven't scored in the second half. To be completely honest, they've taken their foot off the gas. Brian Bennett's played the second half at quarterback. Arizona State's added a couple of touchdowns here in the fourth quarter to make the score a little more respectable. And Oregon has to use a timeout. Well, both of these mascots who've waged a war on the internet in the days leading up to this game do push-ups. Reflective of the number of points their team scored. So Sparky's had to pump out 42. The Duck, 153. And you know, that's one of the problems with guys doing push ups. So many people stop Still going. when they really should keep on going. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. Something that's inside the of them that says they just can't take the pain. I hear you, duck Tony Horton. Going. Uh, those, those, uh, <laughs> The duck, I'm not going to lie, though. His range of motion is impeded a little bit by Absolutely. the belly. And the, and and the, the short well, stroke. He's got, yeah, he's, the big, yeah. he's got short arms. It's Mr. Like Devil the, was getting, getting, getting after a little bit. He's got short arms. He's got, you know, that's why it was so easy for you to hey, bench press. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's, 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 it's like you. It's like you know, not a long way to go at the bar. Easy to crank out those reps. It's valid, though. I know how it works for you. you get the little wider grip. Oh, look, they're trying the onside kick. Let's see if the Sun Devils got it. I believe they did. Alex Garut, the kicker. Had to let it get 10 yards. And Arizona State finishing, showing the fight. The thing that you said that they ought to look for down the stretch. I think the Sun Devils have answered that question um, beyond dispute. Uh, they have. Meanwhile, though, if you're Oregon right now, you have to finish this game. In the second half, your backups a great have job gotten beaten up. 
That's a so, great job waiting on that football. Yeah, that is a tremendous job by the kicker, Alex Garou. Nice job. Ooh, clean great job downfield, too. too, getting and, that block. And, Young. you know, that was legal. Now on one hop, you can't hit the guys like that. When it bounces the second time, so it's changed the way teams have to execute onside kicks. Eubank taking a shot. That is not going to be accurate, and it is going to be intercepted. Picked off by D.R. Mathis. Mathis running it back to near midfield, so in one play, the beautifully executed onside kick. Right back where he kicked it to yeah. and recovered it, basically. What was that? That was like a pop-up 500 right there, wasn't it? The, well, the push. I, I think Eubank probably a little embarrassed right now. That was a bit of a floating duck. I mean, that was basically a punt. And so... Floated you know, right to a duck. Yeah, yeah, you want to run to the sidelines, and, and my, Norvell, their offensive coordinator, is, whoa, 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 let's just talk about that now. Teaching moment. You know, it's amazing, guys. You know, looking at this game from afar, the pressure on an opposing team, what they have to do to beat Oregon, you almost have to play perfect. You can't have penalties, you can't have turnovers, you gotta be great on special teams. If you're not, <laughs> you lack in any department. And Oregon's so tough to beat. Kenny Bassett, getting a carry as several running backs down the depth chart have gotten a chance to tote the rock tonight for Oregon. Timeout on the field. Maybe the officials. Now Brandon McGee going to the sideline. I didn't see McGee's helmet come off. That's the only thing I can imagine that would have sent him off to the officials to stop it. Florida State, Miami on ABC. Some will see Baylor and Texas as Texas tries to regroup. Ducks going back to the ground. Bassett again. It'll be third down. And Stephen Morris. Doubtful looks like the play against Florida State, too. Ryan Williams in. Against that pass rush? Whoa. Woo! Florida State and Miami. Boy, Texas. Trying to recapture some of the relevance in Baylor and Texas. And Nick Warren's put up huge numbers for Baylor this season. And Texas, this just hasn't been able to stop anybody. Baylor's got a rebound, too, though, guys. They had yeah. six turnovers against TCU. I mean, they got to get better. So how about we start talking about Texas's defense? And one of their, their second best player is done for the year now with Jeff Coach tearing his pet. So where you did have a little bit of an advantage, advantage on the two defensive ends, now you only got one. My goodness. That's Will Sutton there, Beast. fine defensive lineman here. You mentioned Jackson Jeff Coat of Texas being hurt. His dad, Jim Jeff Coat, inducted into the Ring of Honor here at Arizona State tonight. Guys, Will Sutton's one of the best players in the country, period. When we talk about the outstanding interior defensive lineman in the country, Star low to the John Jenkins, Jonathan Hankins at Ohio State, maybe. Will Sutton, he's just as dominant as any of those guys. Interesting to see how long he's out for. Arizona State would love to get him back as soon as possible. Almost. Block on the punt. Ducks will try to stop it before it gets into the end zone, and they cannot. The Sun Devils, in the last two and a half plus, will have it from their own 20. Our Wrangler five-star player of the game, Marcus Mariota, 183 total yards, counted for three touchdowns and did it in a variety of ways. Threw a touchdown pass, ran for one, and caught one. And I'm really impressed with his poise because he got off to as bad a start as he could have. First snap of the game, he fumbles it, but then comes back, throws a touchdown, catches a touchdown from Brian Bennett, and then he's done an unbelievable job tonight on the zone read. That was really, I think, the biggest weapon for Oregon in that first half. Quarterback keeping it, Mariota showing you the wheel. Michael Eubank trying to show some wheels. Eubank ducks out of bounds on a first down run. Mariota had the 86 yard touchdown run early in the game, longest of his career. A few yards longer than the one that he had in the spring game that set everybody a buzz and perhaps gave the indication that he was going to be the starting quarterback for Chip Kelly. Less than two and a half minutes, we'll take you to Sports Center, a lot of baseball tonight as the Tigers are on their way to the World Series. Eubank on second and three. Fires has a woo-noo. He steps out of bounds. Boy, he just flicks that wrist. That thing comes out hot, doesn't it? He's got some... A lot like Cam Newton. Wow, I mean, it's it. really... It's just... Stop it's it. It's just... I'm telling you. He I'm drops gonna, back and it's spear, coming, it's I'm coming up. I'm going to spear you in this booth. You, you got short arms. I'm not worried about you. <laughs> I got the stiff arm ready for you. 
There might have been a time when you could power through it, Davey, but that was back before you weighed 162 pounds. <laughs> oh, shots you, should have had, you, you should have had a bite of that burger. <laughs> Short completion to Chris Coyle as Eubank will try to lead a scoring drive here late and try to put one more over the goal line for the Sun Devils. Any momentum that Arizona State can now build late in this game, heading into a giant game at home next week against UCLA is huge. Bryce, fly sweep. Inside 45, down to 42 as we head down toward 90 seconds remaining. Clock stops to move the chains. I think people that, if they didn't watch this game when they see the score, that guy rocks. Sorry. <laughs> Look at that beard. <laughs> That's outstanding. We have to go ahead and just address that. Sorry, man. You know, I can't even here, listen to you talk. This is, uh, this is David's future. <laughs> My man. Few more years on him. That is me. That's me in 50 years, boys. Actually, I'll probably get fired before that. I'll probably <laughs> sit in stands. It'll be something I said. Beer to be red and black, though, rather than <laughs> That's green awesome. and gold. Look at the glasses. The glasses even get that yellow, yellow shade. shades. That's a duck. You know, with all that there, green buddy. paint on him, that might have been the guy responsible for painting the A green That's right. last night. He had evidence. A little, he had a little left over, so he just put it in his beard. He wanted to get rid of the evidence. Eubank, Coyle, pushed backwards. He's going to have enough for the first down with inside a minute to play. You know, my point is, guys, the score is not indicative of the domination tonight. No. I mean, good. The, the, if you see this in the first half, I mean, when Oregon has the starters on the field, Mariota's playing, and they got the tempo down, and they're rolling. I, I mean, spoke it, too soon, by the way. They're going to be about a foot short of the first down. Go ahead, Jeff. It, it, these two teams are on different ends of the spectrum right now. They could have they, they possibly put up a C note on them tonight. They might have hit triple digits if they really wanted to. Mm. Still some thumping going on, huh? Tyson Coleman. Uh, all 43 points the Ducks scored tonight came in the first 18 and a half minutes. Play. Well, the clock's still winding. Arizona State has some time to take some shots at the end zone if they so desire. And I believe mm. Eubank does desire that. And throws out of bounds. It'll be second and 10, 13 ticks remaining before we go to Sports Center. Tigers finish off the sweep of the Yankees. Cardinals now in control of the National League Championship Series, and the 49ers shut down former Wisconsin quarterback Russell Wilson, who very nearly engineered a victory over Chip Kelly's Ducks last year in the Rose Bowl. 49ers needed that bounce back after getting embarrassed at home 26 3 by the Giants. Big win for them. Eubank. Underneath, Ross, let's see if he can get in. Football's loose. Arizona State recovers, and they have a few ticks left. And uh, Graham wants another one. He wants to put another score on the board if he can. I guarantee this week in practice, ball security will be something that Todd Graham is preaching to his team. You know, you know why I don't like this? I just, listen. I'll tell you like I, I tell you like it is. I, I just I don't see the point in this because all this does is maybe you get a player hurt for the rest of the season, like Taysom Hill for BYU. You know, I mean, just take a knee, dude. The game's over. I don't see the momentum building thing like that. I just don't. See what it. what about playing to the end when you're building a program first year? Why not? Why not? You got you got backup quarterback in. Yeah. Let him try to get it in the end zone. If I'm on this team, if it's 28 to 43, does this teach me anything any more than 21 to 43? Well, if you're a freshman on the team and you don't have any reps, you need to get him any way you can because you're not going to get him when you're in a game when it's close. I mean, you got to develop talent. They're, they're young. They have no depth, David. They have none. You got to get it to them when they can get it. David, there are a few who think this is very important whether they get it well, in or not. No, I know that aspect, but that's that's beside the point. Right now it is. So an underwhelming finish for Arizona State as Oregon finishes it off 43 to 21, handing Arizona State its first Pac-12 loss. Sports Center just around the corner, plenty of baseball and also the 49ers in the